This is like when you're at the hospital and they're like, trying to revive you back to life. And they're like, clear. This is how it's been today. Bring it back. Bring but, it back. Uh, all right. I still got energy. I still got some. Uh, I still got some. We're back. We're all good. So far, we got all chips figured out. Hopefully this works. I'm um, pretty excited to bring it to you guys. We will still run for three hours and use because we promised it three hours. And people are going to work unless this thing goes down. Five days? Yeah, and the previous six days we were streaming everything. Shout out to Chip Extractor and the three other people who remain through these technical difficulties. Um, Chip, can you hear us right now? Like, can you hear and see us? Because right now I'm just staring at the screen saver. Let us know, yeah. uh, so we can figure Actually, out if it's live or not. Um, also, while uh, we are <laughs> yeah, this is attention and we're, we have the play halted, yeah, um, yeah. if you're in Nevada, go ahead and yeah, hop on the client. Um, oh, hey, we're good. Give, uh, give Jai the, the thumbs up, let him know we're ready to rock. Um, hey, if you're in Nevada, and you haven't already, go ahead and hit the WSOP Academy client, or sorry, the WSOP.com client, and uh, search for the uh, software free roll. Hey, we're back. I'm hyped. You know why I'm hyped? Um, Could you like it when people in the other room can hear you? Because I like it when people in the other room can hear me. <laughs> All right. All right. Glitches are out of the way. We're ready to rock. We should throw some music on their side. Yeah, well, I guess we could. Um, you know, we can just be a little less animated, I guess. Nah, the people don't like that. <laughs> people don't like that. Let the people decide what they like. All right, well, if you guys want me to be hyped, let me know. If you want me to be calm, let me know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going to pick the hyped one. Um, you, you told you I were ready to rock? Yeah. All right, cards should be in the air any minute now. Well... Maybe as soon as everybody sits back down at the table. All right, so what's up? What is this? Yeah, okay, so let me explain. Um, no, but you got to be hyped. I, you I can't just be like... I don't got to be anything. I'll just tell the people how it is. WSOP.com, baby. Um, we partnered with them about 12 weeks ago. Uh, we wanted to bring um, a bit of a, in, I guess, all-inclusive learning experience for their clientele. Uh, you know, for me personally, I, I think it's important that we help contribute to growing the ecosystem of poker. Um, and WSOP kind of provided that outlet a little bit. Uh, so we agreed to do a one-day academy for them. And uh, basically they would run a competition for the nine people who would get the seats. So of the nine, only five decided to come. Their loss, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, we worked all morning on strategy. So we've been basically going through strategy talks since 10 a.m., uh, broke for lunch, and then sat these guys down a little bit after two to, to fire up cards and, and play a little 2-5. So they're actually playing a mock game. It's not for real money, but it is for real prizes. Uh, the winner of today will get a coaching package, um, their coach of choice, between myself, Chin, and Jordan, of course. Chip, I'm happy to hear you're excited. We can't wait to have you out here, my man. Um, so it looks like we're looks like uh, cards are in there. Looks okay. Yeah, we're ready to rock. Um, all right. So do what you do, man. All right. Let's get it popping, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So what I expect to see, I expect to see my man Jake in the white. 
he's going to, he, I think he's a favorite in this game. Uh, he's been paying attention. He's been listening. He likes to play poker. Um, and um, this, this uh, I'm still learning the names, so I might call uh, people by the way they're dressed, or maybe I'll just learn the names. Yeah, why don't you just learn the names? I'll try to just learn the names. <laughs> um, but all right, it looks like uh, Andy here has a pair and open in the straight draw, and Brent here is barreling the turn with bottom pair. Uh, I kind of missed the action, but just to recap the action, Andy raised preflop uh, to 20, Brent it called, and the flop goes 25 call, and the turn goes 25 call again, and it goes check, check. Um, Unsure, like this hand was played very weirdly. Um, yeah, I'd like to see Andy trip out here. I think. Um, I'd like to see Brett just fold pre flop from the small blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open. completely agree. Um, but if he's going to continue, I think he actually has a decent hand to just like check raise that board with range advantage. Um, okay, he's gonna be blocking a lot of uh, I, I guess like the stronger types of hands that the preflop aggressor could continue with. And it's just such a range advantageous board to the to the caller and such a disadvantageous board to the flatter. Um, he actually would have ran into uh, a scenario where like the opener had board coverage, but um, you know, that's gonna be pretty uncommon, I think. Okay, what are you, I expect to see a fair amount of uh, opening here from Andy who seems to have, like, while the camera was off, seems to have tried to open more often. Mm -hmm. um, and here we're gonna see Andy open to 20 from the cutoff. I believe get called by Roy in the small blind with ace-10 offsuit, and he's gonna flop an ace here. And the flop goes check, check. Um, pretty interesting check back by Andy. And now... I think it's a... Uh, it's a debatable one, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... Um, it's two spades and a club on the flop, right? Or is it all spades? All spades. It's all spades. Okay, so yeah. I think that makes the check back a lot better. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think you're going to face a lot of resistance on board textures like this. You have a hand to showdown value. You're certainly not going to get multiple streets of value yourself. Uh, and but there are just going to be a lot of turns you can't continue on. How does he win this hand, though? Um, I think he just has the best hand a lot post. I mean, the guy had... Oh, I the see. The guy had him smashed. He had uh, I see. The, he's right. Okay. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still working on it. I, I'll get it b b by the next round. Yeah, you have, we, we have to apologize a little bit. We're, we're very unfamiliar with these players. Um, we only knew their online screen names up until this point, and we had no means to match faces to names. So uh, we just met these guys, too. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're kind of figuring it out as we go. The seat numbers should greatly help. Uh, so right now... We right. have Andrew raising from... All right, so Andrew raising from the small blind with 6-5 Okay, clubs. so we're blind blind. And Jake calls with 7-6 off, too, which I do like. Um, Fuck goes ace-king-8, and I expect uh, a Siba and a fold, uh, which is fine, whatever. Um, what do you think about C-betting here with, like, zero equity? Uh, but, but massive range advantage, though. But it's blind versus blind, yeah? Right. Uh, I think that's, like... Totally fine. Like, initiative is just going to win on those pots a ton. Mm -hmm. um, not mental, Mark. You said GG. Uh, what are you referring to? I don't understand. Um, help us out. If there's an issue, let us know. Um, what was I trying to say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so pretty much uh, blind on blind, 6-5 had no like true equity, not even like real backdoor. Right. Uh, but however, he did flop massive range advantage in a spot where his opponent sure. is going to be calling pretty wide. So a Siba there is just going to win money. Yeah, and he also did have a backdoor, so there are yeah. some turns that he can continue. So Brent on. here does limp under the gun with ace check off. So you get isoed by Roy, and so w what do you think about this limp? Uh, I think it's I think it's okay. Uh, I'll be curious to see if it's a part of a bigger strategy. And Jake just g's up here with the seven six zero from the small blind. Really interesting. Um. um so, I guess we're already seeing, like, abandonment of ranges. Uh, so, Jake... Jake three bets, and, the, and Brent limp cold, cold calls. calls and then the isolator seat. Roy folds. Um, this is all incredibly strange. So, I think Jake's three bet is really, really, really thin. 
but you know, whatever, if he has a justifiable reason to abandon his range, so be it. This is one of those cards, though, that, like, on this turn card... He should be blasting He should just sure. be going bet, shove. I mean, yeah. like, what kind of hand is this guy limp calling with? Right, 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 right. Like, it's not... I mean, it could be jacked some of the time. Yeah. His, his size choice here will be very indicative of what he can it's accomplish. Going pretty big here. Pot's, pot's 355, and I, I see a lot of chips, man. Yeah, like 280 here is a really good bet if he's in that neighborhood. Uh, it's going to set up a perfect shovel. 320. Here. So once okay, he, he went for it. I wonder what... This um, is a quick call. See, like, these calls at this speed makes me think that our opponent's, like, just not that strong. Right. Um, which so is now, kind of annoying because, like, this should be the leverage point right here. Right, so that's the problem, right? He chose a sizing where now he can't really shove river. It's just going to be, like, nearly impossible. You're... But he could shove the river. He could shove now. that card, I guess. Uh, <laughs> he can shove the river now. This is the benefits to uh, to to equity realization, I suppose. Um, you know, sometimes you just get there. And I think Brent's in a weird, weird spot right now. Uh, I mean, I think he has to just. I mean, I think he should fold a turn. So I'm not I, really I, sure. Right? I think he should just fold. Like, wow. But I mean, I mean, he does block. Relatively his speaking, like he should, he should really be folding turn a lot, right? Right. I mean, he faced pot on the turn. Um. um yeah. It I mean, seems pretty tough. I mean, this hand. Uh, let's just be. Let's just be honest. Like he's not supposed to limp call the three bet pre flop. Um. Right. Well. And okay. Just, so that that's kind of the thing, right? Yeah. Like everything got kind of. Messed up from the start. He yeah, I mean, at that point, he's certainly gonna call. That's why you can never run a bluff line here. Um, but yeah, so you know, we saw Jake abandon his range pre, but really, he, all things considered, played it pretty well post. Yeah. Uh, his sizing needs work for sure. Yeah, a little bit more crisp on the turn. Uh, yeah, probably could size a little differently on the flop to to set up a better turn mm -hmm. turn bet. Um, but you know, he recognized that that's an advantageous flop to him. Anything. Brent is lip calling with, probably didn't flop very strong, uh, and he's just going to be able to run barrels here, right? Wow, Jake with the 41% VPIP G'ing up. Yeah, that would explain the 7-6 off. Um, I think we see a couple other mistakes in this scenario. Like, if you limp ace-jack, it's certainly not to limp call a 3-bet. Uh, I think 4-betting or folding would have both been reasonable options. I agree. And would have been totally fine with either. I would have... I would have leaned towards a fold, given the fact that Jake is three betting from the small. Yeah, that's um, fair. So I would have just folded. And also, you limped under the gun. Under the gun, one isoed. He's choosing to three bet. You're only 200 blinds deep. Uh, it's it's going to be pretty tricky moving forward. Um, we saw but, Roy iso king seven suited. But to be fair, if um, if he would have shoved without getting there, he gets caught. Yeah, I don't think he would have though. I think he paid close enough attention. I hope so. Yeah, to, so to the leverage point definitely the met on the turn. Right. Like, once once we, he bets, like, close to pot on the turn and the guy calls, like, he should understand that another barrel is just not working. The guy's just, like, going to That's call. fair. And honestly, though, it's it might be a lot to say that he did understand that because if he understood, then his sizing on the turn would be different. Right? Like, he would understand that a smaller sizing would allow to set up for that pot size river shove. Um, to be fair, like, a lot of these guys... Like everything, their they, first exposure yeah, to this was this, today. Exactly. Just right. Yeah, you're gonna see mistakes for sure. That's what we're here to do. We're here to point out like where their where the mistakes are mechanical and where their their uh, methodology is is incorrect, right? And we we have to challenge that. So like I'm challenging Brent's methodology there with Ace Jack limp calling. Uh, I'm challenging Roy's race fold in a scenario where he's getting a sick price mm -hmm. to go three ways in position. Right. So Jake here opens the 10-8 offsuit uh, from the cutoff, just gets called by Andy uh, to 20, and then we see a defend by Roy in the big blind with 9-8 of clubs. Uh, Roy's going to flop top pair here uh, in a spot where I expect Jake to barrel, and I do like this barrel. Sure. Um, he does have a gut shot. I actually don't even mind if Andy floats here. Um, kind of agree. Uh, so Andy's going to fold. I think it's pretty standard to fold there, though. Uh, but I do like a float there, though. Yeah, it's okay. It's just like, it, it's not going to be easy to continue, especially if we go multi-wave for the For turn, sure, for sure. Which it would have. 
Uh, so it turns the ace of clubs, Jin. which is going to give... I mean, it's Jin. Oh, I thought you said Chen. No, Jin. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be uh, a really good card for Roy and a really good card for Jake as well in terms of like a barrel, a barrel card. Um, I think this is just going to go check that call. Yeah, I agree. Curious to uh, see if... Uh, River play will really dictate a lot. Curious to see if Jake introduces an overbet on the turn here. That'd be interesting. Um, because I think that Roy actually has one of the few hands that he could call with, mm -hmm. uh, which would paralyze Jake. Okay, so he chooses a more standard sizing of 85, which I think is totally reasonable. Um, and now we're going to have to play the river. Uh, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, Jake should understand that Roy's best hand is 9x. Mostly and then most of his hands are like 7-8, etc. And even though he beats those hands, yeah. it's not worth checking down and getting shown deuces. Right. Or, or 6x of clubs. Yeah, 6x of clubs, etc. So like another barrel here is just going to be successful, but you have to size appropriately. Pot is 322 and Jake is going to bet 165. It's too small. Kind of small sizing there. It's he might small. just get heroed, but I don't... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he gets heroed here. I mean, you know, the board texture is going to apply enough pressure here where he might get away with it, but this bet needs to be in the range of, like, 275. Yeah. And it works. It works. Uh, and, and that's, you know, a good fundamental understanding of, of combinations, I think. Um, knowing that when you get check called on that turn ace, it's very likely equitable hands. 7, 8, uh... Yeah, seven eight clubs. XX of clubs. Yeah, yeah whatever. Five four. Right. Um, Interesting. I, I I like the way Jake plays. I like the way he. Um, I, I mean, I like his raw just aggression and looking sure. to mix it up and sure. like not show down kind of mentality. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, his mechanics certainly need a lot of work. Right. And I don't think it's a mechanical issue, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think his mechanics are a reflection of his gaps in knowledge in the theory, right? That's fair. Um, but you know, they're very, very, very fixable. They're easy to be worked with. Uh, and everyone here is gonna have theoretical uh, mistakes, right? Uh, that, that's, that's, why they, that's why they're here, that's why they're working hard. Um, I'd like to get inside Brent's head and know the plan with the ace jack there. I'd like to kind of know why Roy chose to um, isolate with king seven suited under the gun one mm. and then just fold to a cold three. I mean, after all, we are playing five handed. Yeah. So that kind of changes the dynamics a lot, which justifies a little bit more why Jake's leaving his range construction so much. But also, you see, he's really leaving himself hang out to dry hand after hand after hand. Yeah, for sure. And you just can't do that accurately enough at that rate. So, what would you like to see happen overall? for these players to combat Jake's aggression? Um, well, first of all, I'd like to see them buckle up and be willing to play uh, big pots. We see Brent here open to 10 in a 2-5 game with Jax. And I just like can't, for the life of me, understand why you'd want to go four ways w with this type of hand for such a tiny pot. Yeah, so we're going to see a four-way pot here, and the flop's going to check around. I mean, this, this is, is mind-boggling to me. Turn is the six of diamonds. Uh, that's giving Andrew a gut shot and top pair, which I expect him to lead uh, with this hand. Uh, and he does for 25. And we're going to see a call from Brent here uh, with Jax. Are we... Sh are we wasn't that... Oh. I'm so confused. Wasn't that Jake that bet? That bet? No, Jack, huh. Jake called. Okay, so the river is an eight now. Giving Brent the best hand it's and so crazy, Jacks are good on this board. I'm curious to see if uh, we're gonna see a value bet here on this river. I, mean, um, I think he should be it's betting. Thin. Yeah, I agree. It's it's really really thin, but I don't think like two pairs checking to him. Um, so pot's 115, and we're gonna see a bet here of 40. Um, I think it's kind of small, but. I think yeah, if he's trying to get called so. by one pair, it's probably okay to go I, small here. I think this is really opening the door for, for some Jake to just make it like 300. But not when he's win. drinking something. I mean, it's just so tough. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Um, and he does find the call here. I think it's definitely interesting with the five in your hand to just like go for it. 
like just like check, understand that you're gonna have showdown when it goes check, check, check. Right. And then when the guy bets and you think he's going thin, to just blow it up in his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's completely reasonable. Uh, I think that you know you retain enough information with your hand to just really realize that he doesn't have that strong of a holding, especially given the action thus far, his sizing, etc. However, there's something to be said about just like paying off this small pot and now having this kind of information, right? That's definitely like true. Now we know that he limp cold called a three bet with ace jack off and- Well, they don't know that. Yeah, they do. They got called. Um, they got called yeah. and showed. Yeah, but the ace jack, he called. I'm still pretty sure he tabled. Oh, okay. Um, and then, you know, he just opens min with jacks. And then checks it. And then just like snap checks a why super do you, dry why board. Do you, why do you think he's checking? I'm not sure, man. Uh, I think that like his style or strategy is is very much lenient towards what we speak of with a defensive strategy. Um, so here we're seeing Andrew open to 15 with pocket jacks, get three bet by Jake in the small line uh, with fours, which I'm okay with. And I would love to see a cold four here uh, with ace deuce of, of hearts here from uh, Andy. Uh, curious to see if that's what just occurred. Um, but I think that all hands are playing pretty good here. And if a cold four comes in, Andrew's put into a really interesting spot. Yeah, there is a cold four. Um, uh, so Andy folds um, and the four bet comes Andrew in. Andrew four bet. Very small though, 75 to 140. So he just regained initiative, which really does take away the merit of Jake's play to begin with. Um, I think that fours are probably a little bit too wide to be constructing your small bet, three bet range this mm. way, especially when you're already three betting seven, six off. Yeah, um, but I'm okay with it just given that like he's been getting away with so much sure. that like expanding to like something like this can't be that bad. I mean, don't you just want to see what you can get away with through flats as well though? Like these hands just perform so poorly out of position in a three bet pot. The flop goes check check and the turn goes check bet. I'm unsure what a turn bet accomplishes here, to be honest. Um, I kind of agree. I think that we should just be checking again. Um, I think we got a pretty, like one of the worst cards uh, on the turn, especially in a, in a four bet pot here where our opponent should have like ace queen, ace jack. Right. Um, you know, I think that just checking that turn is just gonna be superior than betting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he does turn equity, but uh, you're not folding out better either. And I don't know that much worse can be calling. Yeah. Uh, what up, Dangerous Children? He says, what's up, guys? Been really digging the streams all week. Thank you so much. We put Thanks, a lot man. of work into this. Uh, um, this is a WSOP.com sponsored event. That's right. Um, they have, they gave us five qualifiers here uh, to join us at the at Solve for Y Academy. And we're here dissecting their play. So today's going to be a little bit of uh, more strategy-driven, less jokes. Yeah. Um, and we will try to, you know, we want to give these guys this tape after, so that they to are, review so that they're study. able to review and study as, and for you guys to also follow along what we're talking about uh, with these guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you look in the chat, I just nightbotted uh, the free roll that we are putting on through WSOP.com. Uh, that'll be Monday, starting at 6 p.m. Winner will get a uh, shot into the 333 bracelet online bracelet event. So you can literally win a bracelet for $333. Um, and we're giving away a free seat to that. Also, what we'd really like to do is live stream whoever does win that seat and qualifies. Uh, while they're playing the actual online event itself. So give a little love, give a little publicity, uh, you know, put put somebody in lights that, so uh, that earns the seat. Jake opens here with 8-7 offsuit, gets 3 bet by ace-4 offsuit from the cutoff. Yeah. Um, so it looks like things are going to uh, begin to uh, heat up for for Jake here. Like, I don't, I don't think he's just going to get away with it uh, continuously. Uh, yeah, his I'd left. really, really like to see him adjust and get a little bit more into range constructions. Um, you know, we kind of harped on it so heavily early. And I don't even mind that he's taking some liberties and expanding some. We're five-handed. Like, okay, I get it. But uh, some, of these, some of these three and four-bet spots have just been, like, really, really, really wide. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that... So how do you approach those situations where you feel like you're maybe the, the best player at the table? Like, how do you balance between, like, taking every spot and being somewhat reined in? Um, I mean, you know, I, I do have to fight my urge a little bit. Uh, I, I find myself in Jake shoes more often than, uh, than I guess I'd care to admit. But it's just really about, like trimming the fat. Uh, I don't have the same urge looking at 7-6 off to 3-bet now that I'm a little more calculated as I have in the past. Where it's just like you see some money out there and you've just had enough and it's time to, to kind of fight back. So here uh, it folds around to Andrew and he raises uh, I guess 3-bet by Jake. So I think the frequency of Jake's 3-bets are going to shift the, the meta in this game. For sure. Um, no doubt about that. Like he's three betting again, and like they don't know he has ace king. You know right, what I mean? Right. They just keep, they just see him continuously three betting. Sure. Um, so that's gonna shift the meta in this game. I'm unsure how they're gonna react, and I'm also unsure if Jake is going to follow that meta in such a way mm. that is gonna allow him to capitalize. You know, because it's also easy to like just get let the reins yeah. go yeah, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. just kind of like abandon all all strategy and just like keep stepping on people's throat if they right. let you. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. He's definitely going to be the catalyst to this game. It's very clear the action is going to go through him. So I'll be curious to see uh, particularly how his left adjusts. How is Brent and Roy going to start combating against this guy who's just putting in a massive volume of money? I like this 3-bet by Andrew here. So Roy's going to th open to 15 from the cut. And it's one of the first uh, opens from Roy. Mm -hmm. uh, and Andrew just immediately attacks, uh, which I think is good. Yeah. Uh, we see a little bit of button defense here. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually pushes the best hand out of the pot. A6 of clubs folds from the blinds. Uh, what's up, Poker Ninja? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today's going to be a little less fun, a little more strategy. We're really trying to put a good product out for these five who have qualified through WSOP.com to experience a one-day academy with us. Um, for those of you who haven't attended the academy in the past or consider attending in the future, this is what the gameplay portion looks like. Uh, and we do this each day of the academy for three hours. We uh, generally don't live stream it on Twitch. Usually we just create a private video for our students. But uh, per our agreement with WSOP, we said we would put it out here. Everybody at home can follow along. So Jake um, now finds another three bet. Uh, he has it though. And uh, Andrew's just had enough. Uh, so Andrew raises uh, with the, with the four, four three of hearts and now finds a defense. With uh, with four three of hearts, which I think is pretty poor. Um, yeah, that's a little wide. Uh, you know, I've defended in, in my day with hands like this, but the problem is like you catch board textures like this, and you need to be able to check raise. And I think that's what's actually. I just actually, don't think you can. Yeah, but I think that's what's going to happen here, and it's just bad timing. I kind of disagree. I think he's just going to check call. Um, I don't think he's really shown that he's willing to put in a high volume of chips thus far. He's uh, gonna prove you wrong. I hope I hope you're right, honestly. I would prefer to see him check raise rather than check call. But uh, most of his bet sizings and whatnot thus far have been like in the half, half pot range. He's hey. kept things a little bit smaller. Uh, is he going for it though? I don't know, he has black chips in his hand, so I hope so. Right. Come on, 285. So yeah. you're rooting for this, but like. I'm rooting for it but because. But you know what it does to his stack. I understand, but I'd rather him. What just happened, is that a string bet? Um, Technically, yeah. I think we're gonna let it slide. Um, <laughs> this is what I understand. When you, when you I understand. Join the online to the live realm. I understand that um, it does just like it's 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 bad. He shouldn't have defended, but once he landed here, I would rather see him check raise than check call. Yeah, is what I'm trying to say. That's fair. I, I guess what I'm getting at is just like from a functionality standpoint, uh, there is little to no room for him to check raise, and so now here we see leverage His is met. His check Jake's, raise was really small, though. Jake is uh, doing his due diligence and keeping all of his bluffs in. Yep. He should understand that this ace is a complete and utter brick in accordance to uh, range versus range. Uh, so pot's 437, and I think I saw him bet 30. Uh, 150, I believe, is the bet. But, yeah, that's any snap bet. Too. 105. 105, sorry. Um, uh, and this is just a product of leverage already having been met and uh, him just being too shallow to do anything else. 
So he's just trying to buy his free equity. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it's not the worst play in the world if he shuts down here. If he just like gives up the four high, it's fine. If he, oh my God, I can't believe he bet something other than all in. Um, so he's laying Jake. It's 300 to win. Jake's on a call. Is it to win 942 or to win 1242? Either way. Jake's on a call. He's laying him three to one. Um, I don't, I mean, Jake looks painful. This is what I'm saying. Like, Jake was three betting. Jake should understand. I've been three betting this guy all the time. Like, I just have it. Like, I'm, I'm good. Like, he's just, the guy's just losing it. Sure, sure, sure. Plus, no, no plus offense. the runout's pretty Yeah, favorite. like, no offense to, to Andrew. It's just that this is kind of the product of getting three bit all the time. You end up making these mistakes. And this is why you should be three bidding people all the time. Because I'm sure that Andrew doesn't do this every single day. Like, he, this is not part of his strategy. Well, also, the SPR on the turn was one. Right? So the stack to pot ratio on the turn was one. He chose to bet one seventh pot rather than making a, a reasonable bet. Meaning that going into the river, the SPR was going to be like 0.75. Now, I, I would like to see Jake not think. show. Oh. oh, he just mucked the 4-3? Yeah. yeah, it would have been great if Jake just doesn't show. Yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, we'll talk to him about that. That's, that's, huh. that's that live pro thing he needs to learn about. Um, yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, Dangerous Children said, I agree, you got to jam the river if you end up here before high. Uh, that's not what I'm saying, because I don't think a shove is good. Uh, I just think if you plan to bet, shoving is your only option. Um, shoving for three quarters pot there in a scenario where you're repping nothing. literally nothing. Uh, and Jake is damn near the top of his range, which you can't really know, but... Uh, it's pretty tough for him to have like queen jack high at this point. Well, then it, when it goes three bet and then it goes bet call by Jake on the flop and then call on the turn, it looks like he has some semblance of a decent hand yeah, at the minimum. Like also, ten, just like, like his tens fun, his and eight. Got there. Like his yeah, highs are not that's what I'm flop. His ever. bet calls with ace king, ace queen, ace jack. Sure. All got there. Uh, his over pairs on the flop are just not going to fold now. Like if he has jacks, he's not folding those hands. Like, so I guess we're trying to get him off an eight. Yeah, um, right. Uh, it's just not going to function very well. Yeah, dangerous children. We agree for sure. Um, it's the whole pot construction up to the river that is the issue. Uh, so pretty much all of your river options suck. Uh, whether you shove, bet, or check, you basically have four high and you're making three losing plays. It's just a matter of which one loses the most amount of money, right? Um, so, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think that when he check raised flop, he may have even had the intentions of shoving the turn, but when the ace peels off, he realizes that's a range card for Jake, and now it's just trying to purchase the five pretty cheaply. So he goes for the $100 bet. It works. Now I think you could just check, though. Oh, for sure. For like sure. You could just check and realize when against the times that Jake has a hand like he has. Yeah, or just kind of like understand that the play was flawed from the beginning and I'm not going to throw good money after bad. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I'm curious to see how It Jake would not have been an overbet on the turn. It actually would have been exactly pot. So they were about one to one going into the turn. Uh, I think it's viable. I just think it's like improbable to work. Jake's range that he carries forward to the turn includes a lot of ace highs as well as big pairs that just aren't going to fold. Really interesting. <sighs> Sorry. Really interesting dynamic building in the game with Jake now being the overwhelming leader of mm -hmm. this, like you know, competition. Right. Um, if I was Jake, I would just like I wouldn't fold a hand. I mean, to be honest, you would have folded king. I wouldn't fold a hand. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's I just, kind of agree. Um, like it seems as if like these guys. Are just very like I think that the only person that's really gonna give him a decent amount of trouble is his exact left. Um, Roy. Yeah, because he's yeah. he three bet him with ace four offs. Yeah, I think Roy, I think Roy's very competent. Um, I think that uh, it's to be determined how he's going to implement, but I think he understands what needs to be implemented. So here, Andy raises pre flops to. 20 Andrew calls flop goes checked by Andrew which I uh, 
Okay, that's fine. Exactly. Uh, and then a bet by Andy to 50 and a call. Uh, turn goes an eight of diamonds, and Andrew is going to bet 150. I like it. Which Man, is... Yeah, I like it a lot because, like, he should be... He should be light on nines by comparison to the defender. Oh, man. A and, raise? And Andrew knows that. So he goes for it. He blocks. He blocks ace-king. And he's just going to apply max pressure right. in a spot where, like, he should Andy's be. the one that raised with the nine straight. Oh, man. I, I wish the Sam was played backwards. It I know. I, so I much know. better. Yeah. Because <laughs> king seven should raise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, nine, sure. x, nine x should just be calling this turn. For sure. Uh, so the thing is, with Andy, like, you almost never have ace-king here. Um, so you're leaving yourself open. Like, just imagine if you get shoved on here. Like, right. if you get shoved on here, well, how do you feel? You're Wait, gonna, you, mean, you mean with a nine? Yeah. Or I mean, you're, you're happy. I mean, you're not. You're not against ace king ever. I mean, you're, you don't have ace king in your range at all. And he was the opener with queen nine. No, that's not true. Yes, it is. Andrew was in the big blind. Let's bet. Uh, okay, I will. <laughs> Look, it's right here. Oh, you cheated then. I already knew that. <laughs> I didn't have to cheat. He's in the big blind. He certainly was not the aggressor. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so you're right. I understand positioning. He just happened to lead that turn trying to rep the nine. So what I said still holds true. Yeah, but I... He I've... understands it's advantageous for him, so he's going to rep the nines, except he took the most passive way of doing it. The correct way would be to check raise, knowing that you block the ace king. Um, but hey, you know, you're going to see this, right? You're going to see some stumbling along the way. Uh... And it's going to be levels behind the most optimal play, right? Because these guys are coming from I still a don't varied like, online background. I still don't like the raise on the turn with a nine, though. I do. Okay. I mean, well, it's good. It's okay, but like, uh, I think you set yourself up to just rep ace king the whole way, and you put nine in hell. Oh, so you're trying to like blow him off the chop? Not just the chop. I think he has. I think he's leading more than just a nine. Right? There are some hands he's just going to want to continue with, too, like king-queen or queen-jack or, or, you know, whatever. Okay, yeah, I could be on board A with lot that. of equitable hands. I could be on board. I usually default to just call in there, but I think raising could be could be definitely pretty good. Uh, all right, so here we see uh, Brent open to 10, and Andrew 3-bet to 50, he which... loves this min-raise. Yeah, he gets 3-bet uh, big, and then he calls, and Andrew's going to see but the flop and win. So I would like to see Brent just... Um, open tighter and bigger. Yeah, for sure. I'd really like to get in his head and understand what the functionality of this this ten dollar raise pre. Uh, <laughs> uh, trust me, Chip. It really does drive people <laughs> insane. You're just not always right, though. Oh um, man, you see think you're I'm always saying? right. That's what drives people insane. Oh, uh, you see what I'm saying, man? Um, <laughs> I really, really. I appreciate that comment on so many levels. I can't even begin to explain. Um, I do want to address a couple of questions that you had. Uh, you asked how many hours of strategy talk they get with us. We spoke for about three hours this morning prior, and they're actually going to have a sit down with Elliot Rowe after this. So they're going to get a full. They're kind of getting like a full day of the academy. Brent limps here under the gun with four three offsuit. Um, gets isoed by Roy. Uh, with has with ace time. king suited, I would like to see Andrew three bet the button with this hand. Um, yeah, I think it could go either way. I'd really like to see what his raise sizing be larger when isoing a limp, especially after seeing Brent limp cold call ace jack. It's like he's not folding for any amount. That's clear. I'm okay with. Uh, I'm actually curious to see what Andy's gonna do with this hand with the double gut shot. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a standard just call. Yeah, I think a, it's a standard check a, call. Uh, Two diamond boards but for sure. Andrew leads here with bottom pair. Oh no, wait, it checks to him and he bets bottom pair. I think that's okay. So um, just surrendered? Yeah. Yeah. And okay, in a three way pot. Oh, hello. Oh, uh, that's a fun card for action. I, I think it's just going to go check bet fold. I, I think it might. Okay, you're right. Uh, I was going to say I could see a spot where Andy just reps this and just barrels again. I mean, it's definitely viable. Seems okay, but uh, yeah, you're right. It's just an easy check bet fold. Um, I'm I'm curious if um, if Ace King of Spades there could potentially continue in some facets. It's kind of just a tough board, though. 
Yeah, I think you need four way pot. I think you need at least a diamond in your hand at that point. Well, he had at least king of spades. There was a five of spades or something. Oh, it is king off, I think. Okay. Uh, it's king black, yeah, but I, I think it was spade club. Um, if it's ace king of spades, I think you could probably you could probably fire a C bet. Um, I really hope you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll let the chat go ahead and, and rewind it for us and let us know. Um, but yeah, so we did. Basically, they got a full one day academy uh, out of us, and given their online background and the fact that they're playing mostly capped games, we actually just presented the capped webinar for them. So they're going to get a copy of that to to go home with, uh, as well as um, they're competing for a coaching package. From uh, one of one of us three coaches, uh, it's up to them. It's their choice. Uh, and they'll, they'll probably pick you. Um, I don't know. It depends. I mean, if Jake wins, I would assume so because we can just talk baseball the whole time. Yeah. Um, all right. So here we're gonna see Andrew open to fifteen under the gun. Jake's probably gonna find the three bet here uh, from the cutoff with King Jack offsuit. Which I am okay with, now, like yeah. These are the hands I'm cool with him expanding out to. Yeah, like it's usually not in our three bet construction range, like this exact hand. Right. But in a in a shorter handed game where you deem yourself to be the better player on the table, I am perfectly okay with including this hand, especially if you're targeting your opponent on the right. Mm -hmm. um, so he three bets here to forty five, which I'm okay with, and it looks like Brent is going to enter the hand through a cold call with king queen offsuit from the small blind. Um, I would just. How would you, what would you do here with a king queen offsuit? Would you just find the cold four or would you call or would you fold? Uh, it's, it's a really so interesting tough, spot. Because they're a thousand deep, right? Yeah. Um, against Jake in particular, who I deem to be pretty capable of leveling up, I think I would cold call. Um, but I would plan to lead a lot of boards, particularly like one like this where I flop zero equity mm. and can just pretty comfortably bet fold. Um, now Brett goes ahead and bets. How funny is that? The largest bet we've seen him make so far was with his stone cold air ball. Yeah. On a three flush, where when called is he's just dead. I think it's because he. I mean, I don't want to speak for Brett, mm -hmm. but I think it's because potentially he. There's no fear, right? Right, it's right, just, right. Yes, it's, it's so. And, and I agree with you. And I think we'll see him play the stone nuts this way too. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so there's a little bit of balance there, but the problem is is that the majority of the hands that you play are going to be in that marginal realm where you don't have that sense of security in it being like straightforward, yes or no. Um, and that's going to lead him to make a lot of egregious betting errors, some of which we've seen. I mean, he definitely left uh, a lot of money on the table with the jacks. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and potentially could have just lost the pot facing a check raise. Right. Um, all right, so here we're going to see uh, the action fold around to Roy, who's going to raise uh, 15 from the small blind into Andrew, who does defend with A5 offsuit, which I do like. I would like to see Roy increase his pre-flop raise size. Uh, flop's going to come king, queen, mm -hmm. nine with two diamonds, and Roy's going to bet 20 and win Just the right, pot. Yeah, yeah um, I agree with you on the pre-flop raise sizing. Uh, I think it's very clear that everybody's pretty loose passive here so far, with the exception of Jake. Uh, and moreover, you're playing five-handed. And if their calling requirements are this low, then let's get some money in the pot, right? I also think that you don't want to incentivize your opponent to have a peel-happy strategy from the big blind, right. especially when you're out of you're going to be out of position. Right, like, you yes, do, you have ace-king here, but... Right, but even ace-king, like, it's just like, sure, but if he just peels with the 8-7 offsuit, like, uh, it's not... Yeah, I mean, like, at least that's a, a hand you can see coming. It's like the 8-3 suited. Right, just, like, yeah, 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 for sure. It's just one of those situations where you really don't want to incentivize your opponent to be peeling you in position all the right. time. Uh, just to address the chat really quickly, Ginger's Children asks, how did they qualify for this? So WSOP ran a 12-week campaign where uh, they basically grouped their player pool into tiers. Um, or maybe tiers is the wrong term. Teams, I guess. And uh, each week, it was one team's week. So uh, they were up to qualify that week, and the amount of APPs that they accumulated would allow them to qualify. The other three remaining teams would then earn APPs at a higher rate. And this would just rotate for the course of 12 weeks until uh, nine 
nine members were, were selected. Of the nine, five elected to attend, um, and that's who you're seeing play right now. So they went through three hours of strategy this morning. They're going to play for three hours, and then Elliot Rose actually going to come and do a mental game talk uh, for the remaining hour and a half. So in this last hand, uh, we saw a raise with ace eight of clubs mm -hmm. and Jake defend with pocket sixes uh, from the big blind. The ace eight of clubs was from the button. The flop came down to queen seven four with the seven of clubs and ace eight of clubs checks it back. I think ace eight of clubs should be barreling that yeah, flop at a very that's high a board, frequency. Yeah, that's a board that you're gonna be just greatly incentivized to bet your entire range on, I think. Yeah, especially when the, when the seven of clubs is present. Like you're just gonna turn back doors galore Sure. Um, and you're just going to be able to barrel off a, a, at the minimum two times mm -hmm. um, and blow your opponent off like 4x or some draws at a decent frequency. For sure. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I think that a lot of times that's where you see the most uh, errors at, at lower stake play is the inconsistencies with when to bet and when to check. And it almost seems like it's it's just random. Mm -hmm. um, six particularly when show, you don't have something. Yeah, six has got to show down there in a spot where six right. might just like fold the flop. Right. Um, yes. And the turn was a jack. Like six should just not see the river there. Yeah, um, agreed. So here we're going to see Roy raise with pocket sevens here under the gun. And Roy's kind of like the X factor in this game. Like I'm not really sure what to expect from him. Um, he seems to like to open. Uh, I think Brent should be defending this big blind 100%. What did he have? He I'm just sorry, folded 8-5 of diamonds, facing a 15 open. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we can agree, though, that's not really his style. Uh, to his credit, he's not loose passive in the sense of calling too much. Yeah. He's just loose passive in his in the way he initially enters the pot. Um, yeah, I agree. So uh, chin's, I, chin's eyeball on that Diet Coke like it's the last one on earth. It was Diet. <laughs> um... No, um, I agree. I just think that in a five-handed game, folding your big blind like that is just going to like leak you a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, in nine-handed games, you'll probably get away with it more often because like you get to hide a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, just fewer big blinds. Um, yeah, but in a five-handed game, when you're folding that hand, it just makes you kind of a big target from the big blind. Um, sure. But either way, I, I think I do agree with you. It's, it's a little bit more consistent. I do like this uh, three-bet by Andy here. Um, so it goes raise uh, from Jake and a three bet by Andy. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go heads up. I think Jake could fold his hand. Uh, and Andy flops the nuts and finds a check back on the flop. I hate uh, this check back. Um, I just think this board texture is such that, like, yeah, you have it crippled um, by flopping the nut flush. But Jake is just gonna have a lot of hands that he's defending against three bets with that are gonna be incentivized to continue. Pairs, open enders, hands that are drawing stone dead. Unfortunate run out by Jake very, here. He's very, gonna very he's much. gonna pay this off big time. Um it's inter I'm curious to see if he's gonna check or bet. The thing um, is he's gonna pay this off for sure. Uh I was gonna say as long as he checks, it won't be for very much though. Because Andy has no way of knowing that he could possibly have a strong hand here. Mm -hmm. And is just going to be forced to bet like half pot, especially blocking the ace himself. I think that any raise here is polarizing, and so okay. we should be big. I agree. I think it should be. I wouldn't in even the hate of like six or seven hundred. Yeah. And I also think Jake can pretty comfortably bet fold here, not for this price though. I think we're looking at a raise to five hundred uh, total, which means it's only going to be like three seventy-five more. What are what are uh, the 600 so four yeah, seven. Oh, yeah three you can't, more. That's you can't I really fold here no he's gonna pay this off for sure uh you know andy makes makes it a point to ensure that he's gonna get paid but the problem is is that like when jake chooses to lead this river let's let's just be let's just be let's just be frank here um andy should have stacked jake here for sure for sure because when when jake chooses to lead this river it's more likely that he has a small flush or 5-4 exactly, than it is that he has a set or two pair, right? Um, you block the ace yourself with the ace-5, you block 5-4 with the, with the ace-5, you block spades, but not really any of the relevant ones, mm -hmm. right? Not queen-jack, not, queen not the jack, merge not king, spades. Yeah, not queen-jack, not jack-10, not 9-10, not, uh, not jack-9, not king-9, whatever. Like, there's so many combinations of the second through, like, fifth nut flushes. Mm -hmm. 
um, that that's really what you should be targeting to get value from. So this raise sizing should be such that uh, you're pretty close to getting stacks in. Wow, and he folds. Man, that's just a kid who's played too much live poker. Like, because you just have to really know your player pool and know how much they're under bluffing the river. Jake looks to no man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cue, uh, cue the Nick Howard. Listen, I there. mean, the guy just said this, this line is not bluffing and I'm not beating any... Like, He's like he's this is this line is value. I'm not beating his value. Yep. And he's not bluffing, so yep. I'm gonna fold. It really is, like theoretically, such a terrible fold. Oh, of course. But exploitatively in practice, it's an excellent display of discipline. Oh, because, for sure. Because uh, you know I don't know these guys very well, but I think I can say pretty confidently that collectively they all under bluff the river. Yeah, to to a degree of maybe but zero. But this this was a fancy play syndrome. Like, if uh, if Ace Five just bets flop, yeah, Jake calls. Yep. The turn's a brick. If Jake chooses to not believe a uh, turn barrel, Rivers an Ace, and mm -hmm. we're stacking them. Right. And right. it's like if you just play the hand. Right. It's all about construction, right? He right. doesn't need to bomb the turn. Mm -hmm. Right. It's still just like a pretty clean card, and and really, it's like if you're gonna check, that's the street to check. Right, bet the flop, make it look like you have ace-king with the ace of spades, knuckle back turn, and now when you drill it on the river, you're going to face a bet, and you can go for it. Yeah. Um, and now it looks like you have something else, like ace-king, ace-something. That, that's, a, that's a very experience-driven line, though, right? Like, when you're, when you're more in an entry-level spot uh, in this game, and you flop the absolute stones, your initial reaction is to let your opponent catch up. Fair. Um, you don't really consider the idea of protecting the rest of your range, like if you had king queen with a spade. Yeah, I, I think that uh, he he should think about like I'm really gonna be going after this guy, and he has mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, so he should be thinking like, all right, if I'm gonna be going after this guy, like I really need to like, you know, when I do actually have it, like be betting, you yeah. know, because he's gonna yeah, be yeah. betting. When yeah, he doesn't I, li have I like it. to think about those hands like if I had ace 10 with a spade, mm -hmm. what would bet. my line be? And it would by and large be to be all in by the river. Yeah, bet, bet, bet. To just trip out. Uh, all right, so I, Brent limps here with 6 5 offsuit. Um, I feel like we should just go out there and just yell at him. Like, don't limp anymore, just stop. No, I, I mean, no, it's, it's okay. Like, it's not okay. It's not okay for him to limp 6-5 off suit. No, I agree. It's, it's yeah. a poor choice of hands, but that's why we're discussing it, right? Like, they should do everything that they feel Normally inclined do. to do in a normal game. Yeah. And then let us dissect it from an objective point of view where we understand what is very likely to be correct mm -hmm. um, and plug some of these leaks. So, so, like, so here we're going to see Roy a, yeah, with I think pocket nines. big aspect is that they're too impatient to wait for hands like this. Is that 30? Uh, might be 50. Oh, uh, it's, no, it's 20. Um, I would like to see them raise a little bit larger. Um, Andrew's just going after this guy, huh? Uh, all right, so it goes 30. Uh, free bet by Andrew in the cutoff to 50. And it goes fold around. Quick call by Roy. Um, just understand, guys, that like online, it kind of doesn't matter if you just click the call button quickly. But live, it does. Right. Like, you're... you're at the, speed of, yeah, at the speed of which you act will dictate the strength of your hand. So Roy here calls quickly preflop. And when that's, what that signifies is that you have a hand that is ne that's never folding, but is never four betting. And that's going to be right. some sort of the middling portion of your it's range. It's never ace king. It's right. never It's never aces. queens. It's never kings. Right. It's always going to be king queen suited, ace queen off suit maybe, um, ace jack suited, pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket tens. Yeah. Um, and you this, really don't so want to. So this is a frustrating spot for him, and I think it's worth speaking about a little bit because it's one that if I were sitting there, I would say, what could I have done differently? Um, I think post-flop, he does nothing wrong. It's jack 10x, two nines, really doesn't fare very well there. I think folding is completely reasonable. Um, I'm not sure what their stack depths were, but I think they're around 200 blinds to begin. Uh -huh. That's, that's the point where you can begin to merge your 4-bet range a little bit if you think your opponent is 3-betting you in a less than polarized manner. And just the rate at which 3-bets are getting fired around so far today, 
I think I'd be looking to set a tone. Yeah. And I'd be happier to four bet a hand like nines than I would kings because my anticipation is that it's going to get through. Okay. Um, and, you know, getting a four bet through with kings is a real problem. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't want to get it through. Yeah, right. We're just like losing heaps of value with a really strong hand. Getting a four bet through with nines is exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and moreover, like, we just don't lose to a dominated hand. Now, to be fair, we're generally going to default to just defending through a call with nines. So I don't think Roy did anything wrong per se. Um, I just think, like, with the sizings that were used, there's plenty of room to implement a four bet here. I agree. So here we're going to see... Uh well, let's get let the graphics catch up. It seems. Um, so I think it goes raised by Andy here to twenty with pocket threes, and we got to defend by. Oh, I like the pocket deuces fold in the small blind, uh, and then the big blind call uh, with ace jack. Flop goes king eight four, uh, and then now the action is. I think pocket threes is going to win this hand with a c bet. Um, Something and th this is an area where I think everybody can improve, just not surrendering a hand like ace-jack on a board texture like this so easily. If you're unwilling to 3-bet that spot, which is totally fine, I think it's completely reasonable to just defend from the big, mm -hmm. uh, you should be much more difficult on these dry board textures moving forward post. Because you have hands that are on the cusp of being outside of your range construction, right? Like this is a borderline 3-bet hand, so it seems like floating out of position is just very poor, but in reality, we just we just have the best hand. To have the yeah. best hand a lot, and uh, unless we are against an opponent who's just like absolutely denying showdown value, mm -hmm. we should find paths in which we can continue. So here we're gonna see uh, Brent limp and then get ISO'd by Roy on the button, and then Andrew three bets uh, Ace four offsuit from the small blind. And this isn't the Jake worst spot. Right through it. This isn't the worst spot for Jake to uh, to continue. He's gonna cold call and very likely win this hand post flop with one bet, barring uh, barring Andrew like flopping anything. Uh, and that'll shut it right down. So flop comes ace king jack uh, two clubs, uh, and I expect this to go check check. check yep, for sure. Um, completely agree. I think that I think that. Everybody is like way, way, way out of line here. Uh, and I also think that Andrew is in a position where now he's pretty handcuffed by checking that flop. Uh, Jake can very well like just bomb here and have a shot at winning the pot. Now that it went check, check, and the river is another ace, uh, we're never really going to see Jake win this hand. Uh, I think this is an insane value bet on the river. I mean, I don't think that we're getting called by wars ever. No, no, completely agree. Uh, you just have to check and hope that your opponent bluffs at this pot. I think like it's more likely your opponent's gonna bluff at this pot, mm -hmm. right? Just try to rep like you have know, nines. My apologies, I have to step away and take a call. All right, now it's just me again. Um, all right, let's see uh, what's going on. I, th I think that the the gameplay so far has been a little bit. A little bit wacky. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm. In, I'm curious to see how the dynamics develop, but I would like to see Brent delete a limp range uh, and just open. I would like to see Roy. Uh, I mean, I feel like Roy has tried to ISO that limp a lot, um, but I would like to see Roy formulate a plan in terms of like how to how to combat uh, Jake. And I think that's going to be the deciding factor whether he wins or loses in this match. Uh, and I kind of do like the way that uh, Jake's left is playing. I think that he's been playing pretty tough. Uh, Andrew here. I think that he's playing uh, pretty tough. Andrew's Jake's oh, no, right. Andy. Sorry, Andy. Sorry. It's okay. Andy and Andrew. But that's still Jake's right. Jake's left is Jake's Roy. Left. Jake's the blue left shirt? Is Jake's left is Roy in the That's black. Roy? Nope, that's okay. that's uh, Andy. Yeah, Andy. That's what I'm talking about. That's Jake's right. Right? No. Jake's in the three seat. Yeah. That's Jake. Is Jake's he in left. the three seat though? He's right here. That's Jake's left. Oh man, I've been looking at the table backwards the whole time. You see, he's not always right. <laughs> so he's in the, I guess seven seat. 
Correct. and I thought he was in the three the whole time. I thought the table was the exact inverse, yeah, where see. where the right was uh, Andy. I wonder. It all makes sense. I wonder what Andrew's thinking about here. Okay, and he finds a fold. Um, okay, so what I would like to see is, I think Andy's playing pretty decent. I think he's playing pretty tough against Jake, which I think is uh, good. And I would like to see Brent uh, begin to just formulate a plan, like if he is going to limp, uh, begin to limp some good hands. It seems like as if Roy is always gonna uh, attack him on that limp. So if, if the plan is to limp, uh, begin to limp in like some strong hands. Uh, don't race to 10 when you have jacks and just like limp with you have jacks if that's your, gonna be your strategy. Right. Or just raise with all hands for a larger sizing. Right, If you, just generally speaking, if you're constructing a limping strategy mm. and uh, your pivot off of that limping strategy is a min raise strategy, you're doing something wrong. They're the same thing, Yeah. right? The only difference fair. is like you're showing a little bit more interest in a hand when you make it 10 than, than when you limp. But we saw him make a 10 with Jack-4 of diamonds, so it's like clearly just random. So here we see uh, Jake open uh, three deuce of diamonds and it gets defended by both players in uh, the small and big. Andy calls in the small blind, and I would not hate to see Andy uh, find a lead on uh, Bro. flop or turn. Jake is just out of fucks to give. Yeah, he's opening the, the three high on the blind. I mean, we'll call that the bottom of anybody's range. He's gonna uh, win though. I've played the three deuce of diamonds a time before. I know. I, I, this kid's, he's after my own heart, I gotta tell you. Uh, he shipped the spot too. <laughs> yeah, he, he did the delayed C bet. I think that uh, Andy could have won that pot with the gut shot and the backdoor flush yeah. draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just take the lead. I think he could lead flop at some frequency. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Jake's like, if Jake's like really getting out of line, also like your hand can't really check call, it doesn't really right. want to check raise. Right, um, right. So just like choosing it as a lead and forcing Brent to like defend it, and it's going to be pretty good. I completely agree. We're, we're really getting out there though, like starting to ask a lot by expanding all these ranges that don't exist, right? Like he probably just doesn't naturally have a default lead range. Well, the problem is if you're defending 10-7 of diamonds and the small blank, you're you gonna need a, a way right. to win the pot without hitting. Sure, completely agree. Um, so yes, these these are like areas to improve for sure. Uh, working working out what these ranges should be constructed with, like what types of hand groupings, will make the ease of implementation infinitely easier. Um, but I like the way Andy's like, he's trying, man. Like, he, yeah, yeah, he's, he's fighting and he's in second place right now. There's no yeah. surprise. Yeah, I mean, he had the nuts, though. Yeah, he had the nuts. <laughs> he, uh, he found the nuts. He didn't get paid off, though. Yeah, I mean, Jake's in there battling. He's fold, made the good fold. Um, all right, so here I think that I fold around to Roy. Roy opens uh, and we see a fold by 10 5 off. Um, all right, so moving on, I think that Roy is, I, I think, you know, he's playing 12% of hands, but I feel like he's playing okay. I feel like he's iso He is, I, I think his surrender button is a little too readily available. Okay. Uh, we've seen him iso the king seven suited, that's fine, I think, in yeah. a five-handed game. But then when the action got a little weird, uh, he was just very quick to surrender, but he was really getting a good price, right? Like there was a three bet by Jake to like 85 or something like that And then a cold call from under the gun. It's like well, you can't just give these guys aces and kings whenever they're squeezing and cold calling and That's doing true. all this random shit and it's like you still have a hand that had enough value For you to decide to ISO to begin with and now it's 65 to win like 200 mm -hmm. So you're getting a pretty good price you have you close the action, you're in final position post. Uh, you're just in a really good scenario, and it would have come king high. He would have had a real shot to win. I nice don't even scenario. like, I mean, I know you might disagree with this, but I don't even hate the four bet with king seven suited there. Mm, they were shallow for that, man. Okay. I mean, they're only a thousand deep. You're talking about making it like tree fitty. Yeah, and then just fold. 285. <laughs> I mean, your hand sucks. Yeah, yeah. You're just, you know, you're putting in like it's almost 25 to 30 percent of your chips. I mean, if I had ace five chips. suited, I would just four bet there. So like it's a little different. <laughs> I mean, it would have been straight for value at that point. 
you know, you weren't really against two massive hands. Uh, and also, like, they were at the bottom of the range, and any four bet would have worked. But it's difficult for two people, given those dynamics, to both be at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So here, uh, we see Brent with the 10 8 offsuit, finds the fold. Uh, good for him. I, I, I'm a, I, that's kind of what we're saying. Like, li before he lived the 6 5 suited, folds the 10 8 offsuit. Like, just make it consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I think he's going to get three bet. Andrew opens the bow into 20 with 10 4 offsuit, and I just don't like this. Like, your, your left is, is showing a propensity to yeah. just like not give up. Yeah. And he's we're just, just getting, getting mashed immediately. Yeah, you're just getting showered a lot. Yeah. So, uh, we see Jake three bet with Jack 9 suited. Uh, to yeah, it's kind of like the old mentality of dare them to, to stop me. Uh, from Jake? Just in general, oh. right? It's like, dare them to stop me, and that's why you just like open 10 4 off on the button, because it's like, go ahead, stop me. You've been stopped. Yeah. Like, before you even got started, you have a left that will stop you. Yeah. So just know that. That information's available. This guy's 3 bet frequency is the highest in the game. Don't open 10 4 off on the button. I would like to see Andy just like really begin to shower Jake's over 3 betting, though. Yeah, but I, I mean, guess. to be fair, he needs some qualifying hands. Yeah. Right? Like, he had 9 4 off. There. No, no, He's for sure, for sure. I just want to see him begin to, like, take the ace. Begin to take, like, the don't, hands. Tell Jai to get him a stack. And Do you care where, where we sit? No. Wherever. Um, all right, so we're going to be joined here by a special le guest. By a legend of the game. That's right. Um, a legend of the world, really, more so than the game. Actually, that is very true. <laughs> um, but just to finish my point, I would like to see Roy begin to take hands like ace 10 offsuit, ace 9 suited, king 10. Yes, 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 know, yes. Like double, I, I don't know that we've seen him have that many spots. Agreed. I'm just saying it. that when it comes. Yeah. I think there I'll, was one particular spot where Jake 3 bet the button with like uh, something not great. And, and he called and he folded a six of clubs. Oh yeah, that's that's the type of stuff I would like to yeah, see him. Right, right. He was in the small blind, it was a little a little sketch, but uh, I agree. I, I would like to see him pull the trigger. Brent down. bits really small with the set here on the and then it goes check okay, I don't know. He checked he checked, he checked, checked through, the flop. It, yeah, check through on the flop and then he bet small on the turn. Tough board. I mean, you're just not gonna get much action when you're up against King Three. So who is this person that is joining the game? Uh, so, really good friend of mine. I've been playing cards with him for almost a decade. He is the richest man I know. Uh, his name's Bob Bright. Um, he's actually the one who was able to get me invited to the big game because he likes my actions so much. Mm. So, uh, I, I've in exchange uh, over the past, you know, we've, we've developed a pretty close friendship since then, and I've kind of like been trying to help him. Uh, the guy loves to break even. Let me tell you something. This man has millions of dollars, and he loves the game. You know why? Because this is a mock fucking game. <laughs> like this guy. It's worth zero dollars. <laughs> Holy shit, bro! <laughs> this is not even normal stuff. He literally, <laughs> he literally sent me a text. He was like, "Your academy's today, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like. I really need to get out of the house. The big game was canceled tonight. Uh, you, know, you know, you mind if I pop by? I'm this like, guy could be anywhere in the world. I'm like, we have seats open, man. You're welcome to sit. It's just a mock game. He's like, that's fine. He just wants to torture some people. Man, he gives no. He loves poker, man. He truly does. It's, I mean, you have to understand. Bob is in his early 70s, and he truly still aspires to get better at this game. That's like, good. You know, he 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 asks me a lot of really good questions all the time it's just like so this is gonna be this is gonna turn out a pretty interesting pot with brent uh having queens here he's gonna lose massive value in this hand because of his sizing how is this pot so small that's a great question uh he was in the small blind and so he just flatted with queens from he the small had blind. To have. yeah so uh i'm gonna presume i'm gonna go with the assumption that brent flatted queens in the small blind after Oh uh, my god! After a raise and two calls, so I'm curious to see if okay. So he leads for ten, gets raised by Jack Nine, gets three. Look how bet. small these sizings are in a two hundred dollar pot. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> I just hope a black king turns. Oh man. I mean, so at this point, Andy should just be shifting to realization. I don't know that that's true. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean. Because you probably have his flush draws nutted. Not only that, like this guy just led and then called a three bet. Like yeah. he just has okay, a hand. Okay, so he, he smells it out. 
that's a problem. That's gonna that's gonna cost them some money for sure. Well, the problem the thing is though, the pot's three fifteen. Brent's gonna bet like seventy five. Yeah, and if but and this is the problem with taking this approach. But like Brent should check here. Yeah, for sure. He bet fifty. And th- this is the problem with taking this approach. You literally have zero bluffs, and you just let this guy fill the He Andy would have put in nine hundred dollars with this. <laughs> At any point in time, any street on the flop, on the flop, pre-flop, maybe even I don't know, but uh, is he gonna raise? <laughs> yeah, this is actually gonna work. Where he's gonna get, he's gonna go for thin value, and Brent's just gonna get paid off. Uh, and this is just like not adjusting to the field, not seeing what you saw before, like understanding that if Brent's weak here, uh, he doesn't have much to to bet call with. Like he's not gonna have sevens, I don't think. It's not really worth getting thin. Uh, just happily take the fifty dollar price and I think and call Brett should it. check because the majority of Andy's hands is flush draws. When it goes like three bet and then check on the turn. I think it's like a lot of flush draws in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. So so I mean Brett could just check, get value from like the thin values that Andy's gonna have. Rep as if as rep as if we have a flush draw ourselves. Um, the funny part is he would have won the exact same amount. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's just like funny how the game just kind of like neutralizes itself. But if Brent three bets pre-flop, uh, Andy defends, we see a flop of five, 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 three, I believe, mm-hmm. two hearts. I mean, it's just game over. Like, yeah. it's, you know, Brent doubles up and any line he takes, he can check, raise or bet, call or whatever. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you that it wasn't the most optimal line. I just think it's kind of coincidental I guess that it probably would have worked out the exact same yeah it does Um, and that's that's kind of like what keeps people making their mistakes is the fact that the paths may be righteously different yeah and one may be like polarizingly better than the other but when they arrive to the same point uh, it it doesn't incentivize anyone to, to to choose the more difficult optimal path man I can't believe Bob Bray's in this game. <laughs> I can't believe he's folding. This man loves poker. We should probably let him know that he's on an hour time limit and we're shutting this thing down in, in, in an hour and five minutes. He's not going to like that. Uh, we might have to start a home game. <laughs> That's true. We could we could play for some real stakes. Um, I probably should do that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll live stream a, a little uh, 1025 just, later. We just saw Ace Deuce of Spades fold the button. Just open mock? Well, no, someone raised. Uh, Andy raised, and oh, I believe Ace, okay. Deuce, Ace Deuce of Spades folds the button. Jake calls the big blind uh, with Ace Six. He does. He hates this hand from the big blind. He does. Um, uh, but he's but he likes it when he flops now. an Ace. Uh, yeah. Check call flop. Uh, Who folded from the button? Was it Andy? No, Andy's in the hand, so it was Andrew. Yeah, I believe it was Ace Deuce of Spades. I could be wrong. It could be Ace Deuce of but I'm almost positive it was Ace Deuce of Spades. That's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, if it was Ace Deuce of Spades, then they definitely weren't listening during the three bet strategy. But I mean, it's so much material, man. And honestly, we got such little feedback that I personally have no idea if anybody was really buying into to what we had to say, if they were following along. I think if Andy barrels this turn, he should just clip off, like just barrel off. Um, I'm unsure why he's barreling this this uh, this, this river. Turn. This river makes it impossible to barrel off. I mean, he could like triple over bet. It just know. doesn't work though, because yeah. like a king is so incentivized to call to chop. The big blind has enough eights that carried through at this point, and no ace is ever folding when you're just repping ace king. I'm just curious if uh, Hero was trying to triple barrel or not. I don't think so. Like, I don't think he just realized that the eight's not a good triple barrel card. Mm. Right? It just seems unlikely. I, I think that Hero needs to understand there that. He should just be barreling with like Queen Jack Jack Ten, and that's like plenty of hands. Mm-hmm. Um, having pocket threes is like that's a one little of your aggro. You just try to show down. Yeah, like you should just be shifting to like. And I'm realize. okay with like betting flop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you I, just yeah, want to like oversee. Definitely bet, a bet bit. flop. Like you flop yeah. range advantage. Like sure. you should just be betting like almost at 100 percent frequency. Um, but like when you're deciding whether to like triple or not, like just have hands that you know could make well, the nuts. Well, really, when you're should, when you're deciding to double or not. Yeah. It's can I ever triple? Right, right. And when the answer sure. is always no, then your double frequency should be like really, really low. So Brent here opens from the hijack with Queen Ten off. So you get three bet by the button from Andrew with Ace Queen of Clubs. 
and um, we're gonna see a fold. Brent only opened to ten. Let's let's be clear about that. Oh, Brent opened to ten. Sorry. Um, what are your th what are your overall thoughts of the game so far? It looks like it looks like I wandered into Caesar's Palace. To uh, to catch a random afternoon two five game, like it's that eclectic. Is that in our living room or outside our house? Oh wow, they're finally coming for us. The motorcycle gang is outside, ready to come after us. I've been waiting for this day, it's the apocalypse. Um, I think that there's like a a pretty wide range of skill set here. Uh, and the mistakes aren't necessarily transferable across the board. Like some are. Um, I mean, hand selection is pretty transferable across the board, right? I, I think that I mean, Brent limps here under the gun with Ace Nine Offsuit. Gets isoed by Andrew. Andrew flops huge. Uh, he's gonna no. flop the no flush draw. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. And a pair. And a pair. And bottom pair. Um, so I think it's just gonna go check by fold. I here. think Brent's gonna call. He's a nine of hearts. I think I think he's gonna fold. I think he's a peeler with ace high on the spot. Wow. Yeah. Got no. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta know <laughs> your man. He's messing with you. Yeah, you gotta know your man. Uh, I'm right. pretty sure of it. Oh, uh, I don't like this peel. I think that it's I'm, pretty. It's pretty weak. ambitious. Um, it's pretty weak, but you are. If this wasn't a three heart flop, would you be? Would you be that critical? No. Okay, so like, it but being I, I a three heart flop doesn't hurt you that much. Like, you have some equity with the nine of hearts, and I think like you face barrels less often on a monotone board. Fair, but like we're not like our hearts are just like sometimes just dominated too. Well, we're not worried about that. So we're, you're just trying to show. We're it just saying, yeah, we just we're just saying we have the best hand here and now. Fair amount. Like same with the ace jack, where it's like just not giving up on king eight three. That's fine. All and right. we actually do have equity here. Where with ace jack, we really have. Yeah, none. yeah, okay. Or at least no obvious I don't, equity. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. I mean, I just think that, I mean, sure. Like, I, I just think that the, I would, I just don't play the hand like that, but I guess, like, if you do enter the pot like that, peeling can't be that bad. Um, I just think that the, just well, reverse it's floating. It's different because he, like, limp called, but let's say he just called out of the big instead. Yeah, now then he has to, now he it's has a lot to, different, He has right? to call, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. Like the the metrics in which he entered the pot. Were, hey. were off. Yeah. All right. So I expect this to go. I think that Jake is going to peel this hand. Um, oh yeah. So he, he found the right guy to have queen ten of diamonds at this I'm table. Actually, there a lot I'm of actually surprised that Jake chose to just call here from the cutoff with queen ten of diamonds. He's been three betting on a, such a high frequency that maybe he's trying to um, you know mix in a different frequency here. Yeah, um, which I is okay. Like to have seen a flat here too. I think Andrew just went for the four bet, which is oh nope, uh, I was wrong. So it goes call call, um, which is good because that would have been. Lighting it on fire. Uh, this is relatively tame. I think Jake will probably peel one and then unimproved just shut it down. Uh, he may even just like fold flop. And I think that though you don't want to get in the habit of like flopping pairs and folding, uh, I think being led into in this spot three ways. It's okay to fold. Here. Yeah, your equity is pretty murky. Yeah, I mean, you maybe if it was rainbow very with like one yeah. diamond, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe agreed, you can agreed, call. agreed. Uh, your back doors are never getting through. Like when the turns a jack, you're just going to be up against two pair plus. Jake's like already Jeeps. upset. Jake's like, I should have threw my pre flop. Like I would have won the flop. <laughs> yeah, he thinks he he thinks he got over on that one. Uh, little did he know, he really ran into it. Um. All right. So what are your what are your what do they do? Well, like, where do they go? Like, there's obviously clear mistakes going on. Um, yeah. What do they do to fix these mistakes? Um, they have to care first and foremost. And again, I can't speak to their level of of uh, interest. This isn't a standard academy for us, right? Like, these guys didn't put up thirty five hundred to be here. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know a lot about these guys. I don't know who's. Uh, an enthusiast who is doing this for a living, etc. But if they do care, uh, I would strongly encourage them to watch the webinar, watch it again, watch the play of this uh, particular academy, 
watch the webinar again, right? Like beat it into your head that range construction is important and this reactionary process that they're currently going through is going to cost them infinite amounts of money. I want to see my man Bob get in there. <laughs> Tight is right, man. You know what? I taught him. All right. Bob's oh, in there with the pocket tens. He's going to raise to 20. Oh, man. I just realized uh, he probably just comes off as, as the prototypical uh, like businessman at the table. And I'll be curious to see how they approach him. Looks like he's going to get his three bet. Looks oh. like he's going to get three bet by Queens. Of course. Uh, uh, and what I, you're going to find about Bob is he is just the epitome of a non believer. So I mean, he's been around the world for seven years. He's not going to believe it. To the, this hand will make it to showdown for sure. Uh, and we might actually see $1,000 get, get in here. So I think, you know what I think about these formations? Okay. Like when like MP opens mm -hmm. and gets three bet by the small, the bluff frequency is so low. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sheer monster. So I think Bob's treating this correctly. Uh, he has too good of a hand to fold. So he continues to recall. He this should, is this is a brick. He should under right. He should understand that when he faces aggression here, that he has to shut it down. When he faces a check here, that he has to shut it down. Yeah. Uh, I knew he was gonna bet. I was so positive of it. Um, Roy should be very clear that this king does not hurt him in any facet. Uh, I actually like his check call if he understands that Bob's just gonna bet at a high frequency. Um. And, you know, that just really seals the deal. Uh, the only problem for Roy is that he's going to check and it's going to be, oh, my man, he finds it. That's a, that's a really good thin value bet. Um, if he checked, it's certainly going check, check. I agree. And I, I, think, think I, like, like, I like this lead, although, like... Yeah, I think he's just, like, targeting a seven mostly, some, like, eights through jacks. Um, but Bob's just going to have a hand to call with a lot. And I think Bob should fold here. Like, is for he, sure. like his opponent's not bluffing sure. with Ace High here. Ace High's just gonna check and try to try to show down. Yeah. Um. I think the, the problem is with this board runout is it just too likely appears to be Ace High trying to push off a chop in a yeah. scenario where like Bob just doesn't have Ace. Good high. fold, nice Bob. Fold, Bob. Good discipline. Well done. He actually didn't play that that bad. I, mean. I think he played it really well. Like the bet's turn bet's turn debatable, but like the turn I don't even think it's that debatable. No, like I'm you saying should get the showdown with that bet, and you, that's what I'm saying. You he's have just the best trying to some of the He's time. just trying to um, like shut out his opponent's equity, yeah, get value yeah, from deny worse. ace queen. Yeah, and like put himself in a situation where he has a clear understanding of river play. Yep. Like for example, if the turn goes check check and his opponent leads this river, oh, 100 now he has to call. Right. It loses the same amount, but uh, definitely the turn bet is profitable, where the river call is probably not. My man Bob, he's in there slinging it. You don't just play the biggest game in the world and not get a little bit better. Yeah, that's true. That's it's definitely true. Did no he straddle? <laughs> nah, he might be over it though. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I think Andy's over it. Uh, so Andy raises to twenty here with five with some off. with some napkins here. But <laughs> I mean, I thought I saw Bob enter the pot. I'm pretty sure Bob came in. I think Jordan must have the graphics wrong and. Bob raised to 20 with non-napkins and Andy probably folded the five deuce and is against Andrew. I'm interested to see if Andrew chooses a check raise here. Um, I, so I'm, I'm confident that the graphics are incorrect and Bob opened to 20. Andy's not in his hand. Andy does fold, find the check raise. So you think Andy's not in the hand? Correct. I think it was Bob. Andy won the pot. Andrew won the pot. Andrew won the pot. Yeah, yeah. Andy did. Andy folded five deuce pre. Bob oh. Bob was in there with something else. Okay. Um, so that was much more reasonable. Uh, we'll, we'll have a we'll have a discussion <laughs> with our our graphics our man. Graphics guy's been shaky, man. He seems a little tired nowadays. <laughs> it's been a long week. He's been he's been running through a lot of hand histories. How many hands do you think were played over the last? Seven I don't streams? know, but his job's easier than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Typical chin fashion right there. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. So they watch the webinar. They watch this. They watch the webinar. They rewatch this. Yeah, I think that's the best place to start. I think sitting down, putting pen to paper as to really asking yourself some tough questions like, what are my ranges and why? And to be fair, you've been very gracious in giving them the webinar. 
for free. Yeah, uh, I don't mind though. It's literally the same material we taught today, so it's like there's no reason to double dip. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I didn't have contact with them prior. I would have told them to bring a voice recorder, bring a notebook, like whatever. Like these guys just kind of showed up. Like I didn't know any of them. I didn't know their names. I didn't know. Yeah, like, they we didn't know. We didn't have any contact with them until a couple hours ago. Right. So yeah, they just kind of all showed up, ready to rock, and uh, yeah, I mean. It's, it's not that it's unfair to them. It's just that uh, given how dense the material is that we're giving, it's pretty important to just more than absorb it. Like, I couldn't sit through that three-hour slideshow if I didn't know what it was about and then just regurgitate it to you. Right, no, it's super or, difficult. Or just show up and implement. Super difficult. Right. Curious to see... Like, how Jake approaches Bob now on his left. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I don't think much is going to change. I would anticipate that he's just going to keep firing at will. But, uh, like, see, this is not something I would expect. I think Jake finds a fold here. And I think yeah. earlier in the match, he would have just, like, shot No, that's Andrew. true. Uh, that's, a, that's a good hand to defend. But he knew Bob that Andy had his gang on the big one, though. Uh, mailman Muscle... Uh, you probably could have gotten away with it, being that all nine didn't show up. But if 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 the other if the other four would have been here, uh, we would have had to have double checked to see who was supposed to be here and who wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If somebody would have just showed up and just been like, "Yeah, yeah I won the contest," we would have just let them in. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's kind of true. Um, so Andrew calls the three bet and floats this flop. Very interesting. Yeah, it's pretty aggressive. Uh, you're just not going to improve with a hand like ace four here very often, and it's not going to be simple to get the showdown. I've noticed these two have been battling though, and the big reason why I noticed is because they have the same name. I don't think they like each other. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever makes you think that. I mean, just look at the way he's looking at him. Like it's like pretty strong. Like it's like I've seen you online, bro. <laughs> I know your name. I wonder if these guys have any history, like, and who they have history with. Uh, and I wonder if one of these guys is one of the ones I slow rolled at 25 cent, 50 cent last week. <laughs> That's my slow. With the aces. Bro. I'd feel really bad if... if Jake is just case. like, really, bro? I fold one hand. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to wait and wait. Um, so facing a second barrel here, like, it should be... You just have to fold. Clear that ace four is drawing dead. Yeah, you have to fold. Like, yeah, you're getting bluffed sometimes, I guess. Right, but like, you're, what are you getting but bluffed like, by? Like, queen, queen 10. 10. Queen 10 yeah. only. Like and Queen 10 is like game. not even always going to three bet from the big blind. It's just incentivized to just call. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're just not getting bluffed there. 10 9 suited. Yeah, but like, we told them not to three bet that hand. Even, even still, yeah. Well, I mean, they've been <laughs> going pretty ham here on their choices. So, let's get some questions. Like, what, what, what has the chat been saying about this uh, production thus far? Um, nothing. They're they're debating on ways that they could have found their way into the academy today. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, I would do the same. <laughs> Dangerous Children said, I bet you could have found the, the house on Google Maps with enough searching given all the info that's been given out. That's fair. I disagree. Uh, that's some big house. I shouldn't there. disagree. It's, it's, uh, it's 2017. You can pretty much find any information you want. They might be able to like Google your name when your address comes up. Oh, nice. Uh, Jesse is uh, one of the guys who works the cage at Aria, who like pretty much always like helps me out whenever I'm down there mm -hmm. for the big game. And he said uh, both he and Jake have tons of history online with Andrew, who he believes is Lambinelli. Hey. Um, I don't think I, I mean, I don't know any screen names, uh, really. I don't, I don't play on there. Why enough. is this pot so small? <laughs> well, because no one has a hand. Brent had queens. <laughs> yeah, but Brent makes it $10. Oh. Uh, look, he literally did. Brent. Andrew. Wait, why does it say he called 10? Did somebody. Andrew scrap? called 10. No, no, no. Brent uh. called 10. Andrew raised to 35. Andrew raised to 15. Right? No. Yeah, Andrew raised to 15. Oh, that's Brent 15? called. 15? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, my eyes are failing me. That's what I said. Why is the pot so small? He just called. He just flatted the big blind. So he legit does not have a three bet range. It's have probably we, just aces. kind of like established that? It's just aces, probably. We haven't seen him have aces yet. 
That's fair. So this is the thing. Brent, when you listen to this. Shout out to my man Jesse, by the way. Shout out to my man Brent, who's like really came here, like really thugged out. Um, you need to three bet your good hands. If anything else, three bet your good hands. Raise all your hands that you want to play. Or that at will least make, larger. Yeah. Raise larger. Don't limp anymore until you realize why you're limping. Like, give yourself a reason why you're limping. And r- until then, just raise. And if you can't give me a reason why you're raising this hand, then just fold. Yeah, that's something that we kind of speak about. Uh, he'll hear it if he rewatches the webinar, and we kind of touched on it today a little bit. You should be looking for reasons as to why you can't take the next aggressive action. Like, when it's on you to act and you have a certain hand, you should say to yourself, why can I, would, I not three bet this hand? I would have liked to see Roy lead this flop. Yeah, for sure. That's the hand. That's the exact hand to do it with, right? Yep. Because now you have your barrels, and this is one of the barrels. Yeah, so the action goes where I believe... Wait. Under the gun opens uh, with 10-9 off, I believe. Mm-hmm. And why is the pot so small? <laughs> <laughs> it just went call around. Ace king, though. I know, I know, I know. Um, All right. I mean, the, this is going to be just is. this theme. The That's theme the of this uh, of this thing, like, you guys need to just three bet way more than you do now. It's so and crazy. That's what we led off the. Hold on a second. Queen Jack didn't see a river. No. What on earth, guys? Like. You flop the world. What are you afraid of? This is madness, man. Like, some of the hands that are fighting versus the ones that are folding are just, like, wild. Like, and you saw Brent bluff there, right, with king-queen off because he has a zero equity hand and has no problem putting money in the pot with zero equity. Right. Um, I mean, I mean, look, it's okay. Like, they're here to learn. Like, poker is still very beatable. Like, they could still get really good at this game. Sure. It's just a matter of how much work they're willing to put in. Right. Um, so the main thing they need to understand is that they need to three bet way more. And it's not just them. It's the, it's, this is just a common problem amongst, mm-hmm. like. Yeah, it's a like, plague. It's why we started off the entire thing today right. with, <laughs> here's how to construct a three bet range because you guys aren't three betting enough. Yeah. And they're just, like, continually following through with not three betting enough. This is going to be pretty interesting. Jake is going to open under the gun, get flattered by Bob. He's going to see bet. Bob's not going to give up no, here. Um, no chance. He's going to see bet to, I believe, 40? Uh, 30. And Bob calls. I like Bob's call here. I really like uh, Jake's sizing. And I'd love to see him size up again on this turn that makes the, the board two-tone. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of understanding that the deuce is, yes, a brick. But... Most all hands Bob continued with are going to be incentivized to call or not. I hope Bob gets there, man. He did it too. He G'd up. He overbet the pot. No. Oh, bet wow. My man Jake. I like that. My man Jake. I like that. He's trying to rep as if he has like Jack 10 of diamonds. And I don't care what made him choose to do that. Nice like, fold by Bob. I don't though. know if it's because, you know, he knows Bob plays the big game. He How knows about his, Bob's fold, though? Bro, he's giving he's him here some to props. Do it. He's here. Bob's not some businessman that's just leaking money there. Bob just made a really good fold. He did. He understands that he's going to arrive at the river with 10 high a lot and have no way to win the pot. Wow. And he's not getting a good price to call. Shout out to Bob, man. Just like crushing Ivy's room. Dangerous Children says, six stream, uh, tons of great free insight. Any plans for a webinar on Deep Stack Cash? Well, Dangerous Children. Well, Deep Stack, he says. uh, Yeah, we will not be doing one on Deep Stack. Reason being, that's precisely what the Academy is. So if you ever care to join us, uh, it's a three-day experience just like this where we cover the ins and outs of deep stack cash play um, really with the broad strokes, right? So the regular academy is... Oh, boy. Oh, man. We're, we're gonna All right, we'll get right back forward. to that. So Brian's going to open here to 10 and get a three bet on the button by Roy. I expect him to just call... Yeah, this is going to be a small pot, all things considered. 10-7 uh, deuce. I expect the... I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if Brett check call. finds a check fold no, here. No, I think it's going to check bet call. Turn's going to be, you know, anything under a 10 is just going to go check bet fold. Uh, this pot's going to stay really, really small considering how big of a cooler it Why is the been. pot so small? This is how Brent plays. We, we understand he doesn't have a 3-bet range. Well, that would have been a 4-bet. Oh, yeah. Technically, he made a 10, right? Yeah. 
Um, to be fair, he's been consistent. He made it 10 with all of his good hands. That's true. So we're going to see a C-bit here uh, by Kings and a rather quick call. Uh, C-bit of 40 call. Interesting to see how, like, I would like to see, like, a queen fall. Yeah, jack or a queen. Yeah. That would be ideal in my mind, too. Um, hey. Perfect. That's great. Uh, so I, I anticipate. And the two diamonds on the flop. Yeah, too. I anticipate a check. And then I would hope that Roy is going to uh, size up here and go, like, 135-ish. Uh, it looks like he's going to bet, like, 90, though. I'll say this. There's another plague in poker. That's that half pot bet. People love half pot. Why would you ever want to bet half pot against a guy who only has a propensity to See? bet? Yeah, of course. It's it's a nightmare. Um, okay, so he's exposed one of his cards. So though I believe he was going to check call the turn, now he's kind of forced to check fold. Um, which is probably fortunate for Roy because he gave him way too good of a price with the hand that he actually held. Uh, back to your questions. Um, if you want to attend the academy, we have two seats left for May. Uh, we have one open for July. Two great seats, though. There's seat seven <laughs> and seat three. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and honestly, I really anticipate this May Academy to be an experience for the ages. The group that's coming is just very, very polished. Uh, Chip Extractor is going to be one of them. Persuadio, who is not here today, uh, another really high-thinking player. Um, it's going to be a talented group that I'm really excited to, to help uh, mentor a little bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's three days, deep stack cash. We do everything from pre-flop construction to uh, strategy teardown to holistic strategy building, and then finally post-flop uh, Man, they get it all. Analysis. Business acumen too. That's right, Elliot Rowe will Range be here advantages. Again. Agreed. Uh, Elliot Rowe will be here to do mental game approach. We will give you business breakdowns, et cetera. Um, so yeah, we're not gonna be doing webinars on something that uh, intricate. We're gonna save the webinars for like, more shallow topics that we can actually exhaust in a two or three hour period, such as three betting. What's the next webinar. webinar on? The next webinar is uh, May 25th, and it's going to be on the WSOP experience. So it's not particularly tournament or cash driven. It's kind of both. We're gonna divulge tournament strategy. We're gonna go over a lot of uh, the structure of World Series events. Basically, how to conquer a bracelet event is, is uh, or navigate a bracelet event, I believe, is the title of it. But really, it's about navigating the World Series in general. Um, once you show up here, it can be very daunting. There's a cash game in every room. There's a tournament every day. Uh, there's buy-ins ranging from 100 to 100,000. And knowing what events are best value, knowing what cash games provide the softest play, uh, all these things are important to find out, and we're just going to divulge it uh, to the fullest to those who attend. So it's interesting how Brent likes to bluff when he has nothing. Yeah. Um, and the hand of showdown, nonetheless. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how he limp called and then he led. Um, right. He led flop, led turn, and now he's leading river, and he's going to get raised. Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, I just think he's having a good time. <laughs> I don't know, man. I he, think he, he really does seem like he's enjoying himself. I hope he does have a good time. That's part of playing poker. I agree. Um, uh, the July date is July 27th. It's so sold out, though. No, there's one open. Hey. Uh, we have one seat remaining. It was sold out. Both of these academies were actually sold out. Uh, there was a, uh, a business conflict for two of our members in May. Uh, that opened those seats up. And then, unfortunately, there was a family conflict uh, for one of our members in July. Well, it could be fortunately for somebody that decides to come. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying it's unfortunate for his family. Oh, uh, sorry. It was, it, was a, it was a troublesome thing. No, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jeez. Um, it made me look like the bad guy. Jesus no, no, Christ. No, no, no. I mean, just savage. Know, hey, who knows? Like, uh, maybe, maybe it gets exaggerated a little bit. I'm not sure, but like, he made I it feel seem bad like, now. Yeah, he made it seem like it was pretty dire. All right, so, so Jake uh, here opens uh, with queen nine of spades. Me trying to change the totally subject. Reasonable. Um, all right, so Bob's he opens queen defend. nine of spades. Uh, Bob calls Jing up with the, the six five. Um, Bob's gonna lose some chips here. Yeah, he's gonna flop bottom pair, be drawing dead to Jake's flop trips. 
I would like um, to see Jake bet somewhere like 25, 20, whatever. Something yeah, I think like. it's just going to be pretty standard. It's a it's a wet enough board where he should expect to get a call. I think 15 is too small. I Way think he's going to get a little bit bigger. He's trying to like... Uh, he's going to think that's a really fortunate card, but it's just going to be an action killer. And this uh, is something that... I think he's that, uh, a check back now. I like a check back. Whoa, whoa why, is, why is Bob grabbing chips though? Oh, no. He's going to rep. My man's going to rep. He can't rep. He's Bob's dead. trying to rip the full house, but oh, the other guy. I think guy he clicked it back too. No, nah, I think he bet one fifty. Oh, okay, that's a, that's a reasonable raise size. Uh, I'll so, tell you what, man. Bob got some moves, but Bob, you should at least have a diamond <laughs> in your hand. Well, he has a five in his hand. He thinks like if it comes, uh, if what? it comes a five on the river, that he's good. It sucks to check raise when there's a zero percent next to your name. Yeah, for uh, sure. All right, I like Jake's call. Obviously, uh, pretty standard stuff. Uh, hmm. Um. Yeah, Bob's really out on the limb. And, and I'll yeah. say this. I haven't played with Bob before, but mm-hmm. I've heard like you tell me hands about him. He and I think this is this is where Bob loses money. For sure. 100%. He's just like, this, this is that old stubborn mule in him that like yeah. you just can't get out. Uh, he used to see all five cards with ace high, no matter what the <laughs> scenario. For years. I mean, like he just did not fold ace high ever. Uh, and, you know, that was, that was a bit of a gift. Uh... He's trying some things, I'm sure. I don't know if that's necessarily a standard play, but it does lack fundamental uh, thought process behind it, I think. A um, few more questions. Chip wants to know if uh, May goes short, can Observer sit and play? I'm sorry, we won't be able to do that. We actually had uh, four people pay to Observe in May, uh, so it wouldn't be fair to let half of them sit and the other half not. He's also, deaf. my horse uh, is always in need of taking one of the seats so uh he by default will always get an open seat if there is one um and also i'm pretty confident that like we're just going to sell the two remaining uh it's it's just too good value and we have too many eyes on us at this point where um considering we run a limited amount of these and we really only have like two more this year i don't know that anybody considering coming would just pass we might run one on another side of the country, though. Yeah, that's 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 possible. We're we're looking into it. Uh, we're we're in talks. We'll see what happens. Uh, Mailman Muscle wants to know. I assume after the last two weeks, you guys are taking a break from Twitch. Any streams planned yet? After, we're actually twitching Monday. Uh, if you haven't <sighs> again, yep, you <laughs> won't be kidding. here. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah, I am. No, you're I, at I, home, right? I don't leave until 10 p.m. Though. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, if you haven't already signed up. Uh, go to the WSOP client. We're running a free roll on Monday. Winner will get entry into the uh, 333 bracelet event. I might twitch on Sunday. There's a Sunday tournaments, right? Yeah, I considered it, but we just have so much work to catch up on, and now I'm not I'm not going to Zion tomorrow, so I think we can do a lot of the filming that we missed out on yesterday. Sweet. Okay. Um, so, yeah, probably no stream tomorrow. Definitely going to stream Monday. Uh, and then I need a break to study for the Super High Roller Bowl. I just haven't been doing my due diligence to the level that I'd like. And I'm going to need a solid three weeks of of really getting in there. So uh, I'll be sure to announce a schedule within uh, a week or two whenever uh, we plan to Twitch again. But yeah, it probably won't be until mid or late May, if at all, prior to the series. I mean, I don't see... I mean, look, I want to stream a lot. But I just, once the series starts, it's such a problem, right? Like, yeah. even Jake Carver doesn't stream during the series. Yeah, no, no, no. During the series, we're going to be pumping out, like, the... Uh, the vlogs. The vlogs and and Yeah, video shout out to our vlog, like man. Put the vlog in there. Like, if people haven't seen the vlog, I thought it was very well done. Episode 2 features yours truly, Chin I Am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we got another one. 2004 Poker, Berkey without the E. Christian, my name is Alan, one of Nick Howard's CFP boys. For starters, the content is amazing. Job well done thus far. I look forward to seeing much. Second, how many Academy packages do you have left? I'm considering purchasing. The only drawback is that the cost is one quarter of my life roll. However, Tell, uh, ever since meeting Nick briefly and gathering a read on what you guys are about, I want to say fuck it and go all in. Man, I love this guy. He did the fuck it. I love the I fuck know. it. You know what? Email us, uh, softwyacademy at gmail. Maybe we could work something out because I like you already. <laughs> if, the fact that uh, you're willing to fuck it on your bankroll, you belong here, man. Yeah, I do. Not that, not that you should shower your bankroll. But I do you should, agree uh, with that. Uh, and I do agree with Chin. We're not going to give you a discount because that's just not the business that we're in. 
but uh, yeah, perhaps we can work something out on a payment plan. It's thirty five hundred uh, for the three days. Um, and going back to Syrian Nightmare, he asked, at the Alita camp, will we be diving deep into post-flop? Absolutely. Uh, I have five days with you guys in December that choose to attend, and the vast majority of what we're going to be doing is post-flop play and deviations. Uh, more importantly, it's like, you guys will have already attended the academy, so uh, I believe that... Uh, you know, we're gonna have a working relationship. You guys are gonna come prepped, right? If it's anything like that December Academy, if it's anything like this May Academy that I'm expecting, then, you know, we are just going to get into the dark cavernous areas of No Limit Hold'em that only a select <laughs> few have shined a light I'll on. I'll say this, uh, I expect the Elite Academy to be like a lot of work to put together even for us. Uh, because I expect really high-level players that have studied a lot of our strategy. Lucky for you, I never stopped. I have I, I have the Google Drive dedicated uh, to to the Elite Academy. I mean, this is why you're the boss, man. You know, because <laughs> um, every now and then you find the answers. Yeah, and and you know, a lot of it is uh, it's in my head, and it's gonna be a matter of us sitting down and like writing it writing it down. Um, but, but I agree with you. It's going to be taxing. But this is sure. the thing. Like, Elite Academy pretty much just picks off where the 3,500 ends, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, but we're going to spend a little bit of time refreshing there. Yeah, right? the 3,500 Academy, though, the way that we have it down packed is, I mean, for $3,500, I don't think you get better value anywhere. Like, it's just insane. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, we're paid to We should that. have satellites to, like, the 3,500. How would that even work? Just like run like a one. Like Bro. Just show up. That's how we can incorporate Twitch. Yeah. We can start running like 300 or, or like $450 satellites. Yeah. Where a winner gets a seat into the academy. That's not bad, bro. And we can just stream the whole thing. You know, give them like a little nugget. I uh, like it. Maybe even make it just a straight 500. I would like to see a big race. I like That's good. I feel like... Uh, Jordan's like pretty behind on the graphics sometimes, but it's okay. Uh, he's working hard. <laughs> uh, so it goes limp, limp, limp to the big blind with ace queen. He makes a 40. Um, and it goes call, call. Uh, I hate Andrew's call in the small blind. Um, it's just, ah, I mean, it's too just, open. It went 40. Oh, under the gun. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, um, and then Jake just called, right? Or did he squeeze? No, um, Jake, it was limps, two limps, three limps, and then Jake oh, in the big line makes a 40. Oh, okay, okay, that makes way, way more sense. And yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, I don't care for the king. I think as played, he must check call flop. Um, I'm like pretty okay with like Jake just like betting again here. For sure. Ace of, ace of diamond block, like what are you, what's the worst hand you're running into here? Just like, just like a nine, nine like X. nine, eight. Yeah. Like it's like. I, I think now I guess you just show down, I guess. Like, yeah, and now you lose to a five. It's yeah. frustrating, man. This is what I'm talking about. Like when you guys barrel flop, think about runouts and like what their what the ranges is that your opponent has. Right. Because losing, sh like losing to a five here, would, it, there's not many things that tilt me. But if I was to take this line and I lose to a five. I am beating myself up inside. Yeah, and, I'm just and like, you have God before damn in the past. It. Right, you have before in the past. I have. Yeah. We all have, right? Yeah. That's what helped formulate this strategy. That's how we developed this, is, is just losing to these bullshit hands yeah. that had no, pr no problem being in there, or yeah, no, no business. reason being yeah. in there to begin with, right? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think that uh, I'd like to see a little more effort in... Or a little more calculation, I should say, in uh, in how these ranges are being constructed and how our barrels are are being ran through. And to be fair, like they just may not be in that position yet, right? Like we're asking a lot. We probably really shouldn't see much deviation from how they usually play the first time that they're they're sitting down with new information. Brent opens the hijack here with uh, pocket, pocket force, force yeah. and I don't mind to see a Bob three bet this from the big blind sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sure, I agree. Um, I think that I'm he could do what he's doing floating here, though. Oh, mm. uh, it's only $15. I understand. 
So you're gonna see Bob just surrender here a lot. Uh, Fords are just gonna show down and win. Well, no, I mean, Bob I mean, has five high. He might barrel here. Oh, my man. It's, it's just too small, though. That's the problem. I don't think fours are calling here. I mean, that's true. I mean, this is fours. Like, what are you, like? I mean, he's snap calling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he's literally going to beat him in the Why pot. are you calling with fours, though? Like, what are you beating? What bluffs does he have? Jesus. All right. I mean, Bob's just going to be upset. I mean, yeah, that's a nightmare. Bob, you played the hand really well. Uh, Brent. Look at Bob. Look at Bob. Brent is Let's just, just look at splashing. Bob. He's so happy to have picked that off. <laughs> look at Bob. <laughs> He's like this kid comes to the big game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Bob's like, what just happened? I mean, all right. I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. I guess he might have picked up a live read. Um, I don't know. No, I mean, like you, uh, you just have to understand. Uh, just like the thought process here, I think like. This is why Brent keeps pot small, is so that he's able to kind of go out on a limb, and and see his way through like these these small bluffs, et cetera, et cetera. And to be fair, like he's profiting, uh, not much, but like you know he's he's up small, and he's he's really 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 splashy at like pretty reasonably low risk. Uh, it's just more yeah. of a matter of like what edges he's creating. But for to himself. be fair, he's like. I mean, he's card racked pretty hard. Yeah. Like, like he's out of queens. He's had ace, queen, ace, king, queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And he probably, like, didn't really win the maximum with these holdings either. Pretty uh, interesting pot here. So we're going to see Brent opens Andrew? to 10. Andrew three bets t with threes here. Bob, Bob cold calls. calls small blind. And we're going to see a flop where no one really loves their spot. I think uh, Bob loves It goes uh, jack six, four. I mean, it's a pretty tough hand to play out of position, though. Uh, cause well, okay. Threes are gonna barrel. I think threes barreling is like okay. Totally fine. Advantageous uh, flop. Uh, you have some backdoor equity as well. Got to be a little leery of Bob's cold call. I, I would not be so quick to fold ace queen here. But again, like given and the a three strategy, three-way pot is pretty tough. Yeah, and also given the strategy that, that Bob's Brent, gonna win this now because he's gonna go check sure, check for sure for sure. Uh, I don't know that's gonna go check check. I th oh, it went check check. <laughs> I think that's an okay card for Andrew to just sell out on. I think uh, it, and take advantage of the times that Bob. Not really sure yet. what Bob's accomplishing here with this bet. Um, I guess he's trying to get peeled by like ace get called high. by Ace High. Yeah. Um, I don't think that happens though a lot. Yeah, I mean he could just be like, kind of turning his hand into a value bluff. Trying to get fools by what? Like tens? nines. He's wow. actually getting called by worse here. Wow, Bob knows. Is, is Bob knows what I don't know. I mean, you know, this is did, why the man he has did just show down five four high the money. He did just shut down 5-4 high in a very similar spot. Uh, granted, the river bet was for $35 instead of $125. Um, but... Go Bob. I mean, nice bet, man. I mean, knows... I really do think he's, like, value bluffing in that spot. Do you think sometimes he, th he thinks 10s fold? No, I just don't think he really has a purpose behind the bet, and it just naturally falls into the value bluff spot. So like sometimes he thinks nines fold, but yeah. sometimes sevens call. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, and one way or the other, he's probably wrong, but it just like ends up working out that way, right? Like sometimes threes calls here, but sometimes, like sometimes yeah. pocket nines again, or a different opponent holding pocket nines, just like he can't be bluffing in mucks. Uh, you know, that, that happens in poker all the time where there is no rhyme or reason and the theory just isn't gonna uh, hold up true to the implementation. A lot of ragged hands here. Uh, Brent has the only real one. And Andrew this is has kind a of flush problem though. for Yeah, this is kind of the problem with like betting so small. He just leads here. So this is this is strange. This is a bluff. Yeah, right. But he actually has a hand of value this time rather than, you know, king, queen, high or, or whatever. I, mean, I, I guess I'll, like... I'd rather it, have a king, queen. I was going to say, in some instance, like... On those hands, those hands were valuable, though. He's right? betting again. Yeah, he just sells out. Like he's just. I like the it. fact that once he starts betting, he doesn't stop. <laughs> kind of, but like you accumulate so much information through a bet that if you really start to analyze what what types of hands your opponent's continuing with, it's really difficult to fire again. Wow, that's actually probably a good fold, all things considered. Uh, like where you're not gonna get the bluff river. Yeah, it's six hot, bro. Maybe you had a flush drop. 
He had a six high flush draw. <laughs> he had a flush draw. And against, <laughs> considering the hand he was up against, he should be able to win. Fair. But you just don't think that some guy's just barreling sevens into four We've players. We've seen some things, man. We're seeing some things, that's for sure. I mean, I, I think that the main course of action here is for these guys to really... Like, look, we're dissecting post-flop play in a scenario where everything has to be taken with a grain of salt because they need they need so much work on pre-flop. Yeah. That it's Constructing like, pre-flop ranges is like a dire need for all five, I believe. Hell, throw Bob in, all six. I mean, Bob, that's true. I'm curious to see how this just like works out, like moving forward. So I would I would like these guys to keep in touch because I'm like it's not often that you're afforded an opportunity to get like an entire one day coaching for free. Yeah. And you know like when I was coming up, like I would wish this was available. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, I think the problem becomes that like they're kind of competing at the same levels. Uh, in an online community that isn't that vast. So uh, they're not really incentivized to befriend one another. That's fine. They don't have to befriend one another, but they could um, like just attempt to stay in touch with us. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, from that aspect, I, I completely agree. Jake here with Pocket Queens here. He's going to race on, from under the gun. I would like to see Jake just like start mashing. Like just I mean, like 30. Like yeah. Just start raising 30 and see yeah, what happens yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Yeah, I agree. I will say one thing that I really appreciate out of these guys is I was afraid because it's only a one-day academy and we couldn't really do the cumulative prize like we do in the three-day that they would be incentivized to just start piling. Yeah. And everybody's still like, from what I can tell, uh, Playing operating. true to their game. Yeah, exactly, precisely. Uh, so we're going to see I Andrew lose that. a decent amount of chips here. Um, so Andrew's gonna flop top pair with second kicker from the big blind, and it's gonna go check check uh, or check to Jake. I expect Bob to fold, but he's too hood. <laughs> well, is he gonna raise? No. Nope. Okay, he's gonna call. Just a call. It's actually like not that bad. Um, if he thinks he could take this away somehow. I like a squeeze here, but he's just gonna call. <coughs> or did he make it two hundred? Okay, so he did raise. A little on the small side for my liking. Um, yeah, this to me comes off more as an information probe, and than it's an information value. probe where information is not going to be true. Right, right, right. Clarity moving forward. I mean, Bob may end up still peeling this with Ace Ten High, right? So like, you don't really gain a lot. I mean, if Bob peels this with Ace Ten High, King Jack is just in a world of like it's just blurry as can be. Yeah, I'm not shocked. I told you, man. This guy likes to take Ace High to the felt. I hope he turns an Ace. <laughs> I hope he turns a 10 or a king. Okay, that's a the complete The deuce clip. of pumpkins. Uh, if you have king jack here, you are pumped, and you're looking to bet like 300. That, but I think he went small and went like 225. Which that's means, another thing that I want to talk about, like in terms of like understanding your bet sizing and yeah. like don't hedge. Like, yeah, what are you hoping to accomplish? Yeah, like right? what are you... Like, it's either value or bluff. Yeah, I want people to tell me like you bet 225. Why are you betting 225? Right, because you're just giving the majority of the range that you're attacking, a really sick price yeah. to continue. And it's fear. It's fear-based. For sure. People are just, they always want to hedge. Don't want to play for stacks. This kid's King a Jack. boss if he's raising. Yep. He did it. He knows he has to shut Bob out of this. All right. It's gone Listen far. to me, Jake. Contact me. I will coach you. You are going to be a very good poker player. <laughs> this kid, people do not raise this turn. I agree. This is I a boss agree. raise. He's about to stack this guy. Yep. Hey, did he pump fake him? I think he did. Oh. oh okay. okay. Call in a call. Yeah. King. Damn. Why are you rooting against him? I mean, I want him to feel pain so that he understands what coaching entails. <laughs> <laughs> Jin doesn't want to give him the hour for free. He wants to, he wants to chop him down a little bit. Uh, that's about going to lock it for Jake with the... With the fifteen-minute warning here. Wow, nice play, man. I uh, mean, well the done. kid, the kid could play poker. I yeah, mean, agreed. I, he's I, raw. He's he he's good. He's just he's just he's, young. he's, he's just young. Yeah. yeah, for sure. He has the chops, though. Um, yeah, I, I like the fact 
his raise on the turn shuts out Bob. That's For the sure. goal. Like you're value raising, but you're also shutting out Bob's equity. And it, it met leverage. Yeah. Right. It just forces uh, it, it forces a point where stacks are either going to go in, or you know this dust ball. This it, kid's playing forty percent of hands. As he should. It's five handed, man. Six handed, whatever. Everyone else is playing eighteen. <laughs> And they're playing trash, too. That's the funny part. It's not even a well-constructed 18. Yeah, but don't get too hyped, bro. Like, we might sit down. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This, this all ends in 15 minutes when Elliot Rowe gets here. Fine. Maybe I'll just let the cameras run uh, and, and twitch Elliot's mindset. I don't mind it. I think it's actually really good. I would have to run it by him first. I'm not so sure that yeah, he don't he'd like be okay that with it. Um, Man. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, I'm not impressed easily, but I, I like that raise on the turn. Agreed. I think he plays really well. Uh, I think he stands out head and shoulders above the field, and uh, that's that should be really encouraging for him. I mean, it, and honestly, it should be encouraging to the rest of the guys because you should be looking at the things that Jake does well and and understanding why he's doing them and mm -hmm. attempt to implement them in your game. Right. And you know what? Like don't have an ego like the kid plays good that doesn't mean you suck it just right. means that you need to like take the things he does well implement them and forget and do and add them to the things you do well as, as well yeah and also like pay attention to what he does poorly like we we were critical of him as well yeah um yeah you're not all that bro <laughs> this is a really interesting spot everybody has the same cards uh, so shockingly, so ace, the best player is gonna win. Ace nine off is actually like the biggest. Is this a three bet coming? Oh man, he's going for it. He does not give a shit. He has a hand though. Yep, that's the hand you want to have right now. Interesting. He's supposed to be pulled here. Uh, I disagree. No, look, well, look at stack depths. That's everybody's oh, over two hundred blinds except for Andrew. Who, yeah, but he's out of position though. And, yeah, yeah, that's why he sized up. That's why he was made one fifty. See, this is a little trick that most people don't know, like. You can give the perception of being pulled by your sizing while mm -hmm. being merged. Correct. That's a level up that people don't understand yet. <laughs> this kid is Boston. He, I mean, he paid attention for sure. If he, Andy he thinks that saw the slides. If Andy thinks that Jake is merged here, mm -hmm. he should have four better. Um, Calling here is not going to lead you to profit that much. I kind of agree. Yeah, especially with that particular hand. Where like on these boards, you, yeah, you want to defend, lose. but you flop no pair, no draw. Yeah, and he, Jake's flops pretty good at hand here. He flops significant range advantage as well as heaps of backdoor. He's mm -hmm. just going to bet and win this pot. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I mean, there's nothing he could do. Like, I think he should have bet bigger, though. I hate that he down bet. God, he did everything so good up until this point. Yeah, I like know he's setting up barrels, but you don't need to set up barrels. Leverage is can't like, barrel now. This is the problem with the down bet. Yep. You can't rep a ten here, and That's now right. you have to check. That's right. But I think his aggression is just going to take over, and he's just going. to... No, he can't. Like he, he can't bet this. This is like the nut worst card in the deck. Like you can't. If you bet through this, like you could just get raised. Yeah, easy barrel spot though for Andy, uh, and I do believe he's just going to take it down. This is frustrating. Uh, Jake should just win this pot. Jake, you got owned, bro. No, he didn't get owned. Yeah, he, he just did. made a mistake. Yeah. He owned himself. He he didn't he didn't do anything. Uh, he got owned. Andy didn't do anything except for implement. Uh, he took the rope that Jake allotted him. Yeah, but if he, if Jake just bets bigger, he just wins the pot. You got That's owned, what I'm bro. He didn't get owned. He Yo, owned hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> And out here soliciting. Himself. I'm not even soliciting. He's getting it for free. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting. If he wins this conversation, he gets it for free. That's true. So it's, I'm not soliciting anything. I'm just trying to help the kid. That is true. Oh, I'm just gonna direct him right to you. Uh, kid plays good. I, all right. So yeah, I think that's a common mistake. Like you flop significant range advantage, but now you want to hedge. Right. So you down bet. Right, right. Right. Because you're like, oh well, I'm gonna set up barrels. Problem is. Like, when that turn 10 comes, you didn't plan for that, right? You're not right. just like, oh, damn. Right, like, like, you got barrels set up to go through with, like, a jack, a king, a queen. You think you're going to be able to barrel an ace, but you're getting floated by ace high a lot mm -hmm. because you allowed ace high to call. Exactly. Um, you know, they're going to be, like, bad gut shot draws, whatever. Like, you're just allowing him to continue with a far weaker hand range than you're incentivized to 
uh, permit, considering you just have king, queen, high. And like, even if you, um, like, let's say you bet normally and you do turn the jack, you could just shove on them. Right. Uh, they were deeper than that. Uh, I don't know exactly. Yeah, they were 1,300 effective going into the I flop. mean, you could just barrel twice. Or you could so check it's like You could just make it 225 and then just play into barrel again on the turn, whatever yeah. he improves. Uh, and he's going to improve with like half the deck. Uh, moreover, like when he does bet 225, the hands that are calling him are very, very capped. And They're very like strict. sevens. Yeah, right. It's like small pairs and it's, uh, it's like a 10. Uh, and then like, you know, some nut flush draws. Which actually, that's really interesting because he had either the king or the queen of clubs. And I think that that makes a club kind of uh, incentivizing to barrel. But really, a big portion of the range that's calling you on the flop is not flush draws. Uh, especially like the way the hand played, he's going to have a lot of ace x of, of clubs. Bob flop's huge. Yep, that's going to that's gonna work well for him. He has the old open-ended straight flush draw. Brent is betting. Um, Brent's... Still going to continue to barrel with absolutely nothing. Get I mean, the best he has hand. a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. Yeah, this actually isn't the worst candidate to lead with. Probably uh, was it was a really small that's bet a, size. That's a, that's a flush. Sorry, I thought it was a straight flush for a second. Now he has a straight flush draw. This is the real problem, right? He has nothing. He has no indication of uh, being able to bluff here. But he I don't actually. <laughs> Do you ever lead Bob's hand here? No, not right? Not against the guy who's gonna bet 20 bucks. I don't uh, like Bob's race size. Like, it's like so small. Yeah, but he should expect to be against a flush or a king, not ace four of clubs. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I don't like Brent's bet size. It doesn't accomplish anything. All right, so another thing you guys are gonna need like to remember. I also don't like Bob's show. You guys need to remember that your bet size needs to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Like. If e every single chip you put in the pot should be accounted for if if someone stopped you right at that moment and asked you the question why did you pick that size right and you should be able to explain exactly why you chose that size and exactly why you have this hand correct completely agree uh let me text jai let him know we're gonna play one more orbit but don't let them know. No, of course. Yeah. Kind of keep a secret. All right, so we're going to see Andrew here with Jack-10 suited. He's going to raise to 15. I would like to see Jake shower him immediately. Come on, Jake. So Jake just calls. He's getting scared. He doesn't want to lose the lead. Hello? Uh, Jake should just three bet him. Like, he should just be going after people. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now that's going to bring in Brent behind, Andy behind. And this is the problem with just like default flatting. Like he it's just... It's so strange just, to me that he default flats these hands that are just like... He likes to flat the middle. Like he yeah, flats... Yeah, those he hands are like the ones I'm so pumped to be three betting. Yeah, I mean... What happened here? Who squeezed? Oh, this is post. I'm yeah. Sorry. Uh, so he basically just got free roll. I mean... He probably could have shut out pretty. <sighs> So much potential, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> one more round, huh? That's it, one more round. So Six what do the people games. think about this? Like, obviously it's not as entertaining as our normal streams. It's not as hyped as our normal streams. At, at times we were a little bit surprised with the gameplay. So I'm curious to see like what you think, what the chat thinks. Like, do they want to see something, like, do they like this? Do they like this more serious tone? A little, of, of some more, like, a little bit more mellow? Or do they... Man, I hope not. I mean, I'm bored as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I actually enjoy it. I just don't know anything about these guys. Yeah. So, like, as time progresses, like, during the three-day camp, right? Like, we get to know these guys. Like, we're rooting for people. Like, we're, like, really hyped when someone, like, changes something in their strategy. You know, like there were times that like that we have we've had people that like never three bet before with King Queen. Right. And then now we see them like cold four bet King Queen and we're like hype, like high fiving them and everything. And yeah. it's like that's part of like the enjoyment of it. And it's like I really do enjoy like seeing things change. And it's just a shame that like I'm not going to get to see that, you know, because that's part of being a coach, like seeing that progression. Yeah, 
I completely agree. Uh, I'm cool with doing the strategy stuff some of the time. I think that it gets a little dry. I don't think that this is like a consistent product that you can put out there without A, uh, devaluing our services as a whole, mm. and B, without like boring your audience to tears somewhere along the line, right? It just becomes trite at some point. Mm. So I don't mind mixing this in. You know, it's like if every sixth or seventh stream was, was going to be a little more strategy based, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, I also just don't know what the landscape of Twitch uh, has in store for us, right? Like I just I, I know it's a uh, I know it's an outlet. Mm -hmm. I know it's a platform. I'm just kind of unsure where we fall in the grand scope of things, because uh, really and truly, at the end of the day, I want to do something groundbreaking. I don't want to just like fall into the cracks of what everyone else is doing. And I'm not saying that that's going to be the case, but it's like, you know, we're not, we're not really uh, on trajectory to get 10,000 views uh, the, the way we're rolling. So I don't necessarily think Twitch is a, a medium where good content is always rewarded. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of just like what's in vogue and, and what's my Bro! What? Shazam! That's, a, that's, what they, that's what they like. No. Nah. Bazam! Yeah, I'm not doing that shit. Uh, you don't want to do Bazam? No. All right. Uh, then we're not going to make it. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to make it on we're Twitch. Not make it. <laughs> we're going to make it on Twitch without the Bazam. Everybody here is a fan, though. No, uh, these guys. They, these... they like it when we break down hands. Any analysis from you is great. I find the discussion pretty effing awesome, even if there maybe wasn't super tricky or awesome play. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about poker, right? Like, most people wouldn't. Most people wouldn't be able to identify high level play if it smacked them in the face. And that's why announcers are so important. I would like to see Andy 3 bet this in. Me as well. Whoa. Um, so, like, sometimes people get scared because under the gun opens and you have one of these hands. I like this. That's the best time to do it. Um, yeah, because now you're just like, sh like, yeah, I know you're under the gun, bro. I 3 bet you. Wow. Right. Bob gives no, no respect. <laughs> Uh, All right, so this is gonna let's see. This is gonna be where Andy shows talent or not. Um, Bob's gonna check. What's the line you're anticipating? He should be betting flop, How and he's gonna get called. What do you think his two barrel frequency should be? A lot. I think almost a hundred percent. I don't think Bob has that many kings. Yeah, and wow, Bob's gonna lead. Bob's a gangster, bro. Bob just leaves his turn. So this is where a lot of mistakes can occur. So uh, Andy also improves on this turn. And, and these are just call, he though. Blocks, he blocks 7-5. He blocks 6-8. Uh, so he feels incentivized to raise because he should still hold range advantage. Mm -hmm. But what he has to understand is that he doesn't usually have board coverage in this spot. So like if he smashes through, for instance, which he did, uh, uh, yeah, we saw it coming though. That's way too big. I just like the fact that Bob's slow rolling him. <laughs> Bob loves to nipple. <laughs> um, Bob just says, "Okay, so this is the thing." Like, the shove is huge. Yeah, I mean, it's just. A, I mean, I would just snap call here. I mean, he shove it. The the pot is like he shove it. I guess it's not that. This big. is the it's problem. About one and a half X This is. Whoa! Baba, what did you put him on? What he could be shoving for value with worst hands. Yeah, ace king. This is clearly a buff, aces. but like aces, ace king, king queen. What's oh, the semi bluff, right? I mean, no. that's why he's doing it. Is he has a six. Hey, what's going on? hey guys, how you? Are you? What up? I mean, Howdy, bro, joining us here. what just happened, bro? Um, Bob is not thinking that through very well. Just uh, we knew the mistake was coming, though. We we yeah. said. We said this is where people make mistakes, and then the mistake happens, and then Bob he just folds. Capitalize. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I can show him the video and you know, kind of run him through the thought process of like, what hands do you actually put your opponent on that you think beat you on seven five four king when you have seven five, right? Because all you can really say is like a set of kings or six eight. Bob has too much money to fold there. <laughs> that's that's not a good reason <laughs> to call or fold. I'm just saying though. I mean, yeah, I mean. Well, like, in a mock game where no money's risked, when, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. Yeah, you definitely should be folding then. Um, wow, really surprising. I think we've seen, I've seen enough to identify everybody's um, 
strengths and weaknesses. Like strengths and weaknesses at this point? Yeah. Um, so like, I'm, I'm actually okay with ending the, ending the gameplay at this point because I, I've seen enough where like I could, I identify it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that, you know, the mistakes have been pretty standard. Like this is a lot of what you see at these stake levels as, as being the issue for the majority of people that are playing. Um, there are two passive in spots where they have a hand that they should be aggressive with, and they're too aggressive in spots with stone cold nothing. Um, or in this instance, near nothing, right? Like, yeah, he had the merge portion of his range. Wow, Bob just doesn't there. fold, man. It's so weird that Bob calls here, but he folds the 7-5. Right. This is an easy call. I know, but it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, I love that he won't show his hand. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna slow roll. But it's just ah. crazy. Like, the guy triple barreled on him when the turn's an ace and he just calls him anyway. Yeah. But he won't call with the two pair in a well, it's spot. Like he understands, right? Like, he doesn't ever really anticipate a shove mm -hmm. when he leads that turn card because he knows it's him, right? So yeah. when he gets shoved on, it's like, okay, well, this guy's responding in a way un, uh, unexpected to me, so he must just have it. But when he check calls with top pair, good kicker, and then turns an ace, he wholeheartedly expects another bear. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, his bluff like, frequency. Yeah, it's just like, okay, I'm just going to call three, and if he has an ace, he has an ace. Uh, makes, it makes the line, like, relatively easy. Six Semper says, it's great to pick up threads from the conversation, inferring where people are or should be pulled or merged, and how to take advantage of that. It isn't really a part of my game at all. Now I have something to go down the rabbit hole. Always cool. Man, we're giving away too much. Shut it down. These are all trade secrets. Shut it down. Like, he just said rabbit hole. I know. That's like our trademark. Like, we've copywritten <laughs> rabbit hole poker. <laughs> we might just have to change the name of the academy. Rabbit uh, hole. Solve for why rabbit hole. Solve for why hole. Whoa. 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 Just stop. <laughs> Filter that one. All right. Solve for why rabbit. I don't know. I don't know where you're heading. Uh, so, I think they have two hands left or three. What else they said? That's it. Um, I saw uh, Berkey and Christian have good chemistry. Oh, all right. What's right above it? You read it? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, they, they, they said that we have good chemistry, which is great. That means they didn't see the stream yesterday. <laughs> That's true. We deleted that one real quickly. It was only 15 minutes, though. No, it was an hour. I tried to save you. And <laughs> just... It was a solid hour of at each other's throats. I should have saved it. It would have made good vlog material. My girlfriend was looking for it. Oh, good. I'm <laughs> glad she didn't see it. I'm sure you uh, you were like, yeah, babe, you got to see it. They're just so nah, unfair to me. I didn't say that. I was like. You'd agree. I was like, so I you said. You should better set eights on I was like, so Dan O'Brien and I said that we should better set. And Berkey said no. That's not what Dan said. Now you're just putting words in his mouth. He was very indifferent on the play. <laughs> so what do you think? What do you think? Do you, did we see an all in? Oh, he had a queen deuce. Yeah, they might be just trying to, uh, I guess. Oh, he had 750 love. And the pot was massive, I guess. Oh, oh no, it wasn't massive. It's just like the all in made the pot. Yeah, massive. Andy might just be trying to catch Jake. Uh, little does he know we're stopping it right now, just in case that is the case. So, Jake, you are the winner. Uh, congratulations. You have one hour of coaching coming to you from. One of us, and you will still be a part of the competition for the leaderboard on WSOP.com. The winner of that leaderboard gets another coaching package from us, as well as uh, an entry into the WSOP 1K. Rabbit hole. Not rabbit hole. I hope Bob wins this. The 1K online bracelet event. Um, and something else, perhaps? I honestly can't remember. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> Good. One of our loyal dangerous children didn't uh, didn't tune in until after the stream had ended, which is great news. Okay, poor Brent. Uh, he's supposed to just lose a big one here. He's gonna keep it small though, so uh, he's gonna lose a little. But I hope Jake four bets. The old ace three off. Yeah, just so that he loses the the challenge. That doesn't matter. I already yes. No, you can't. This is still a live hand. No, I deemed him the winner. It, what? It makes sense. What do you mean? Because otherwise it incentivizes people to just show. No one's, the they're not in the hand. It doesn't matter. Oh my God. You just don't want just to gonna to bail him out? You're just gonna bail him out? <laughs> He's gonna check call. You're a clown. Look what's gonna happen, bro. 
Uh, he's going to fold anyway. He's going to go. Of course, he's good. He's going to go bet. What if Brent just folds? Just like mucks the tens right here. Nah. He's going to go check, check, bet. Wait, he's going to lead? Pop three bet, right? Yeah, but Brent's leading. Brent's going to get stacked. Mm, maybe. He only to be has. Fair, this balances out some of the random bluffs he took. Yeah, but um, now he's just like he's saying. Definitely string betting. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a string bet. What what does uh Jake do? Wow, just finds a good fold. Yeah, of course. It's bottom pair. Why didn't he just fold preflop? He Shit. can't. His button's broken. So Jake. Or, what do you uh, do if you're if you're Bob here? Do you just call? I personally would raise. Um. You don't want the four to fall. Yeah, or the five, and I just want to get stacks in on the turn for sure. Where now it's gonna be tough, especially when he checks. It's weird that he checks though. Uh, I don't think it's that weird. Bob has to have. Hey. Wow. How does he just check back and then get rivered, Bobo? Why did he check the what turn? Are you afraid of my man. He was trying to realize. Oh man, they could have got in on the turn. They had like one and a half SBR. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought. I would I'd... just overbet shelf. Actually, I probably overbet shelf the flop. And just lose this way. Is he gonna go for it? That's the question. He's in a bit small. Nah, no, he's going for it. You'll see. He's at 500. He overbet. Bob's just gonna snap call. Wow. I would never call this. No, you can't. If you're ever checking turn because you're afraid of something, now there are two one liners out there and you don't have. I would fold a set of sixes. I might fold a five. Yeah. I don't know how though. How could you ever <laughs> arrive at him having a 10? I don't know, but he has a tag every time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> nice fold. Bob. Good fold. But Bob, you should, have show, you should have shoved the turn, though. Yeah, you should have just showed the kings, though, to, like, really, Ooh. really let them know how good you're playing. No, nah, if the guy shows me a king, then I'm just like, wow, he's checking back kings. That's true. <laughs> All right, so that's game, right? Uh, I think this is the last hand. Damn, I wanted Jake to lose one right nope, there. Nope, that's game. You're correct. All right. What are, your over, what are your overall thoughts? Um, it was choppy, man. It's uh, it's kind of what I expected, right? You're getting a wide, wide range of, of talent and understanding in this game. I thought that Andy and uh, Jake really shined. I thought that they they were the closest to implementing a holistic strategy. Uh, they still definitely have holes here and there, but there's a lot of room to improve for them. Um, I thought that uh, overall. Roy played probably some of the best pre-flop poker of everyone here. Um, I wish I could get that graphic back and see. He played 10% uh, of hands. Yeah, I was going to say, see what everyone has, uh, stack-wise and everything else. Um, the V-pips were like 30-ish, 22, and then they dropped like 11%. Right, yeah. I thought Andrew played well. I, he was, he was on the aggressive side. I think that like he has a lot of room to uh, improve his cash game as well. Basically, like getting mechanics down pat and... Uh, oh, they're doing a pillow hand. Uh, getting mechanics down pat and, and really understanding uh, what he's hoping to accomplish with this strategy, I think will tighten up a lot of the small leaks that he had. Playing kind of like improper hands in improper spots uh, not three betting into scenarios where like it'd be profitable to three bet stuff like that. Uh, I think he could really improve there. Brent, I would just really love to see him embrace the variance of poker a little bit. Uh, I think he's really trying to just make games way way smaller than they're naturally meant to play. And I think I'd rather see him just like hop down. A stake or two, mm -hmm. and and learn the proper mechanics of like playing a little bit more long ball rather than just trying to get the showdown at all costs very very cheaply. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I think you make a good point in in moving down stakes when you think that you're pl not playing optimal given the factors that are in play. And to be fair, maybe two five is not his regular stake level. I'm not sure. Uh, I know he said he mostly plays sit and goes, so uh, maybe he would be more comfortable at like fifty cent a dollar or twenty five cent fifty cent, and that's totally fine. Uh, I would just strongly encourage him to get out of the habits that he's building, mechanically speaking. Uh, start working on three to five X here. Start uh, really developing a good pre-flop range uh, and understand where your barrels are post. Um, All right. And hopefully, like, these guys can take a lot away from us sharing the webinar with them. Yeah, and I mean, and the people that are viewing, like, 
you know, it wasn't our normal stream. We also like didn't know much about them. Mm-hmm. So like the academy foot, the academy commentary is way like more in depth, in line. We also don't share it, right? We also don't it's share private, it. So yeah. there's that much. Yeah, so it's a lot more like, you know, my, my A plus plus game where you guys are just getting my A game. <laughs> but you know, what can I do? Anyway, we have to go talk to these guys because, you know, we owe them some time and stuff. And Elliot is here waiting for us. So we're about to shut it down. But when are we back? Monday? Monday, 6 p.m. We're going to run the free roll if you guys haven't checked it out yet. Again, I'll put that link in the chat. Uh, Hit up the WSOP client. Search for the solve for why free roll. That is the password. Also, if you haven't looked at it yet, check out our vlog. Uh, We launched that last Friday. Our next one will be out late this week, so keep an eye out for that. Check that that one out. That one's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be all chin all the time. I'm outie. Um, (laughs) Until then, we will be streaming on Monday. I'm not really sure what the schedule will be moving forward after that. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, We're going to get back to the online scene starting Monday. So we'll see you then. Peace.